Okay. All right, everybody. It's 606. Welcome. This is Manhattan Community Board 1's full board meeting for the month of March. It's March 22nd. My name is Tammy Meltzer. I'm the chair and we will jump right into it. We will start each meeting with our public session and then open and close a public hearing and then start with our business session. So let's take a look and see where we are. Um, okay. All right. So we're going to, let me just open up my tab. So I have who's here. Okay. Ooh, okay. We've got our timer up. Thank you so much. And we will start with our public session. So in the public session, I have in order, we'll do Judith Kanepa, Helene Ansarud, and then Diane Stein. So in that order, can we find Judith? Lucian or Lucy? I Excuse see. Me, go ahead. Yeah. There are four logons mm -hmm. for. I'm dive in just on the chance that I, I was called on. For some reason, I cannot Judith? hear any. Judith. Sorry about Judith? that. Um, should I start talking? Just give me a nod. Nod your head. Okay, great. All right. So I'm calling from, I'm part of the, the Sane Energy uh, group of, our group is called Sane Energy Project. I thank Community Board for giving us time to speak today. And my name is JK Kanepa. I know it's really challenging to keep track of everything that's going on with the climate these days, and let alone to know what to do with it. I'm here to give you a few simple, easy steps that won't take time and will help us get out from the clutch of the um, monopoly utility companies that raise our rates. We have very little to say about it. Our coalition has been fighting climate change, including supporting legislation that protects our environment. So tonight we have two bills we're supporting that are being uh, placed in front of the governor and the speaker and the majority leader for the budget negotiations. One is the Build Public Renewables Act, which is really groundbreaking. It would allow the New York Power Authority for the first time to own and build energy infrastructure. And that would mean that, that they could create renewable energy at uh, publicly owned. So there would be no profit motive for people who invest in the utility companies to make money off of our our being captive rate payers. The All Electric Buildings Act would phase out gas hookups and building construction in New York State by 2023. Uh, all buildings with certain exceptions for the considerations where it's really uh, impossible for the building to phase out gas, but in almost all buildings they would be required to phase out the gas hookups. And what we're asking people to do is contact the leaders of the Senate, Andrea Stewart-Cousins and the Assembly Speaker, call Hasty and ask them to support and pass these bills. We'll put, I believe there might be a flyer in the chat already, but if not, we will put one in there and um, you can follow through by taking the numbers of those legislators. So I thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, for Judith, for being with us. Let's mute Judith back down. That's perfect. Thank you so much. And let's move on to our next speaker, Helene Onisrud. And I apologize. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Thank you. Helene, you should be able to unmute yourself. Let's reset the timer. 
Helene? This one, you know, Helene? Out. She's totally different than Ashley. Helene? Can you hear me? I can quite well. Thank you so oh, much. Okay. Thank you. Um, so thank you very much for giving me time to speak today. My name is Hélène Ansrud. I'm a member of the No North Brooklyn Pipeline Coalition. Um, as uh, JK said before me, it is very challenging to keep track of everything going on with the climate. So um, I also wanted to um, encourage you to uh, do something that's very simple and that won't take very much of your time um, to um, help with what's going on. Um, as you may know, the last intergovernmental panel on climate change report that came out recently is stating that basically things with the climates are worse and that what was originally predicted by many of the digital models um, is um, no longer accurate. So um, it gives us only a few years to make big changes, especially get rid of fossil fuels. Um, our coalition has been fighting climate change in a number of levels. Um, we have uh, uh, been fighting a pipeline that uh, National Grid has been constructing through Brooklyn, North Brooklyn. But in addition to this action, we also oppose other National Grid initiatives that are detrimental to the climate. Um, the main reason that I was uh, coming tonight was also to encourage people to um, call uh, the leaders of the Assembly and the Senate um, to support the, the bills that are being sponsored in the state legislature. Um, I did ask Diana to put a, a flyer in the, in the chat so that it would be accessible to people. Um, and that gives you all the information you need to be able to call. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for coming in, Helene. Uh, Diane Stein, you will be next. Can you hear me? I can, Diane, welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, hi, my name is Diane Stein and I'm a public member of uh, Community Board 1 Quality of Life Committee. I'm also a resident of 40 Harrison Street, and I'm here to urge people to support, to vote yes on the Quality of Life Committee's resolution to rebuild the cobblestones um, in the streets of Tribeca. Um, this has been an ongoing issue um, ever since the cobblestones were re redone and, to, and they started um, caving in and buckling in, in since 2009 and, and CB1 had passed a resolution in 2012, uh, nothing's been done and um, a two-dimensional picture doesn't do it justice. And it's not just on Harrison Street and other places in Tribeca, Soho, you know, there are many streets, but it's hazardous for pedestrians, for um, people with mobility issues, with walkers, wheelchairs, visual impairments, bicycles often go um, on the sidewalks, which creates another hazard. And a number of people, several people have fallen and one person, a neighbor had actually died as a result um, of complications. So I um, urge people to, to, I hope something can get done and I hope this resolution can pass and, um, I know that cobblestones are land are landmarked, but perhaps they can be if they can't be paved over. Perhaps they can be rebuilt to comply with safety, the basic safety. Thank you again for letting me speak. And I hope some of my neighbors. I, I think Diane Lapson had wanted to speak, but I think she's having some technical issues. So um, there are people who could speak more eloquently on this issue. 
Well, Diane, thank you very much for logging in and for chatting thus far. We'll keep going down. I don't know if there are other members of your um, neighbors here, but I will keep looking. Um, next person is Desi Robinson. Desi, Lucian, if you could request to unmute him. Unmute. There you go. You're there. Welcome hey. to Community Board One. Thank you so much. I wanted to jump in and say hello, and I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Desi K. Robinson. I am interested in joining the Community Board One. I am a professor of community health education at Metropolitan College of New York. And so we have been part of the community down there for a while. I've also worked at St. Vincent's Hospital. And so I have a real special place in my heart for the downtown area of Manhattan. And I have been a resident in Manhattan for a, about three years now. Prior to that, I was a, a resident for five years. I am a very passionate New Yorker and I'm really, interested in having the opportunity to come down and be much more immersed in the community and have a real voice in improving the lives of down down in the in the lower part of Manhattan. So thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to speak and say hello and I look forward to the opportunity to joining you all. Well, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Diane Lapson, did we get Diane's audio fixed? Lucian? I am looking, but I do not see Diane Lapson as a prior attendee. Uh, she definitely signed in. So, and Laura has her hand up, I'm not sure. See. Laura, you're a board member. You can unmute yourself. Okay. I wanted to respond to the um, cobblestone comment, mm -hmm. if I may, because sure. we, a few years ago, I did a whole photo essay on this problem, which is a huge problem. They were not installed correctly. And I, I'm a landscape architect and I have access to the DOT and parks department paving details and I documented what it's supposed to be versus what's there. And I think we tried to reach out to DOT, but it is a really severely dangerous situation. And I, I you know, I, I'm not sure how we can address it beyond what we put together, but we did, we did look at this a couple of years ago and it, it never really got ameliorated. Hmm. Um, I do know that they did talk about this in quality of life. So I know that this will come back to us. So if Thank you want you to very... try to dig up my little photo essay or anything, let me know because I we all would the love... <laughs> that would be perfect. We'd be happy to include okay. it with the resolution. So yeah, okay. that'd be amazing. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, bye. Okay. Uh I think if we don't see Diane um on, let's see. I, I see her, I see her. Hold on. She's on now. Wait. Um, there she is. Hi, okay. Diane. Hello. Hi, Diane. How are Hi. you? Welcome. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can. It's delightful to have you back at a CB1. Well, thank you. I'm trying to behave myself. <laughs> um, I start I, now. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> I, I just uh, I just logged on, so I was having a lot of problems getting on. So where are we? Am I making a public comment? You are. Please okay. welcome. Okay, so um, I just heard the comment about um, trying to get Department of Transportation's help before. It was actually in 2016, we had a resolution from the Tribeca Committee at that time um, asking that about, I don't know, there were between seven and 10 streets that we listed that was severely dangerous. And um, at that time, uh, 
it was sent off to the Department of Transportation. We never had a response. And then um, in two, I, wait a minute, 2009, 2016, 2018, I brought this up to the Quality of Life Committee again. And then we tried to get some interest. And I, I spoke to the new commissioner at the time who was at our meeting of the Department of Transportation. And he said he was going to look into it but we never heard back. Then we, our neighbor fell down on the street, had a very bad accident, rushed, was rushed to the hospital. His wife was going to be here tonight, but she couldn't, sadly. Um, he was rushed to the hospital. He had to have emergency surgery just because he crossed Harrison Street and tripped on the cobblestone, broke his hip in such so many places that he had to have his hip replaced, his whole entire hip replaced. And to make a long story short, um, after he fell up, he fell down again in the hospital and then eventually he died. And we believe very strongly that he died because of these cobblestones. Because if you just try to cross these cobblestone streets, you're taking your life in your hands. It's like you literally have to look down and walk very slowly, whether you're a mother with a baby carriage or a senior or somebody on a bus. Diane, I apologize. You might have just gotten cut off by the auto timer. I'm going to request to unmute you just because I think, as a former board member, I'll be nice. Am I, am I unmuted? You are, dear. Okay, summing it up, nobody's ever responded. The mayor's office, uh, de Blasio's office was involved last. He said, tell people to cross at the corner. That was his solution. And we must get this fixed. It's, it's really dangerous, not just Harrison. It's a lot of streets downtown. And just my final statement, <clears throat> If it's true that it's sinkholes, which the mayor's office was insinuating, then we have bigger problems even than cobblestones. Because if they're sinkholes and we have so many big buildings being built constantly in lower Manhattan, then we've got big problems here for the future. But thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, Diane. Nice to see you even virtually. Um, you know, I'm still going to make my pitch Come back to the board. Susan, your hand is up. Uh, I, I wanted to just reiterate that we uh, it came before the, I believe the preservation committee and we everybody wrote and we did because it's all part of the preservation. But uh, I, I don't know whether the mayor's office was being glib. There's a whole piece of business around cobblestones, replacing them and doing it. You almost have to send somebody from Italy to do it and it costs money and they don't want to pay. So there's a piece we should look back into our history and see what we wrote so we don't also reinvent the wheel. Uh, we, and, and Laura, I remember Laura's piece. So I think we should put it together and write uh, and do something very proactive. That's all I wanted to say. But we've done the stuff and we should look at it. The good news is all the, be all the resolutions were pulled and quality of life looked at them, so. I think okay. uh, quality of life or transpo. So yeah, we'll go over that later tonight. There's a resolution. Alrighty. And with that, uh, we actually at 625 can close the public session. And that would put us to open a public hearing. And the public hearing is about reaction to the mayor's preliminary budget for fiscal year 2023. Let's see if we have anybody who has signed up for that or if we have any board members who have hands up to comment. Seeing none. And seeing we do have resolutions on this, I will actually then close the public hearing. And move on to our business session.
Okay. So let's take a look at the adoption of the February 2022 minutes. Does anybody have any comments to add or say? If not, then this is our first roll call vote for approval of the minutes and off we go. And then we'll go into our elected officials. So Mimi, take it away. Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. And Maruso? Sad. Miss Moretti. Blank? Blank says hello to everyone and yes. Awesome. Brown Kennedy? Brown Kennedy votes yes. Thank you. Cameron? Cameron votes yes. Thank you. Thank you. Cassell? Cassell. Good evening, everyone. And yes. Thank you. Kali? Kali, yes. Thank you. Chang? Chang votes yes. Thank you. Chapman? Chapman says yes too. Thank you. Charcutian? Charcutian votes yes. Thank you. Cole? Cole, yes. Thank you. Coleman? Jesse Coleman? Or Jess? Get back to you. Corman? Corman votes yes. Thank you. Kucha? Kucha votes yes. Thank you. Curtis? Curtis votes yes. Thank you. Airman? Bruce? Get back to you. Flores? Flores, yes. Thank you. Uh, Flynn, yes. Thank you. Forsberg? Forsberg votes yes. Thank you. Francor? Francor is a yes. Hey, everyone. Thank you. Friedman? Friedman, yes. Awesome. Thank you. Froman? Froman, yes. Thank you. Galloway? Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein? Goldstein, yes. Thank you. Grant? Uh, Kenny Grant? I can get back to you. Gupta? Gupta, yes. Thank you. James? James, yes. Thank you. Kay? Yes. Thank you. Canal? Canal's yes. Thank you. Kettering? Kettering, yes. Thank you. Coppell? Uh, Joel Coppell? All right, get back to you. I'm on the phone. Okay. Uh, Lamry? Lamry? Don't see her. All righty. Lewinson? Uh, Lewinson, yes. Thank you. Lynn? Bernard Lynn? All righty. Colin Mahoney? Okay. McHugh? All right. Meltzer. Meltzer votes yes. Thank you. Myhawk? Uh, Jeff Myhawk? All righty. See you yet. Pat Moore? Happy spring, everyone. Moore votes yes. Thank you. Uh, Michelle Mullen? Mullen votes yes. Thank you. Bob Schneck? Schneck votes yes. Thank you. Laura Starr? Yes. Thank you. Jimmy Sung? Jimmy Sung votes yes. Thank you. Bob Townley? Yes. Happy spring, everyone. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Weinstock? Uh, okay. Uh, Z? 
Jazzy. All right, Eric, you? You vote yes. Thank you. Uh, Zeltzer. Zeltzer votes yes. Thank you. And has anybody joined? Should I go through the um, the absentees so far? Do one more round through the absentees, and then we'll go from there. All right. Hey, Maruso. Okay. Coleman. Airman. Grant. Coppell, Lamory, Lynn, Mahoney, McHugh, Myhawk, Weinstock, Z. All right, we've got 35. All right, there we go. Thanks. All right, let's let's rock. We'll go through. We'll start with our elected officials, representatives. And we'll start. Uh, we'll go with Congressman Nadler's office first. So we'll do Hannah Wienerman. Um, Hannah, welcome. Lucian, you got her. From Congressman Jerry Nather's office here. Um, so earlier in the month, uh, Congress passed the FY 2020 Appropriations Bill, which is also known as the Omnibus. Uh, this included $10.8 million for New York 10 community project funding requests. Um, in the interest of time, you can look at the full list of projects on our website and our previous newsletter. Uh, this Omnibus also included $13 billion in humanitarian and military aid to Ukraine. So that the country has the resources necessary to defend itself and care for its people. The congressman also signed on to a letter to President Biden calling for immigration relief for Ukrainians fleeing Russian aggression. Um, in the House, last week the House passed the Crown Act, which is the bill that came out of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, this, the Crown Act is a really important civil rights bill that explicitly prohibits discrimination on the basis of hair texture or hairstyles commonly associated with a particular race or national origin. Uh, it goes to the Senate. We're hoping that it passed quickly. Um, in local news, uh, we continue to work on helicopters as a quality of life issue. So one of the things that uh, we're working on is that um, the current FAA administrator indicated that he would uh, resign at the end of the month. So the Quiet Skies Caucus, of which Congressman Nather is a member, wrote a letter to President Biden and Secretary Buttigieg urging them to nominate a new FAA administrator. Um, the FAA administration should really, you know, previously they really focused on uh, the airline companies and industry, and we want to make sure that the administration is uh, working to address the issue of aviation noise and other impacts of communities on the ground. So we'll continue working on that. I will come back to the board once we have an update. Uh, Congressman Nadler participated in Sunday's march to stop the mega jail in Chinatown. I know many folks were there. Uh, Congressman Nadler joins the call to urge the city to listen to the concerns of residents, business owners, local elected uh, officials, uh, community members, you know, many of whom have spoken out on board to delay the uh, site's demolition and consider alternative plans. So we're continuing to push for that. Um, the last thing that I will flag is that it is tax season. Uh, Earlier in the month, I believe, we uh, sent out a newsletter with a lot of resources and information about there are some new um, additional credits or um, things that folks could really benefit from. So we've listed all of those um, in the newsletter, which I'm happy to link to in the chat. There's also a free filing and free prep uh, resources available, but I will include all that information in the chat. As always, it's a pleasure to be with everyone tonight. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's uh, great. Uh, that was wildly fast. So thank you. Um, when we call your name, if you can put your hand up just so we can find you faster in the attendee session. Does anybody have any questions for Hannah? Vicki, your hand is up. 
It is. Thank you, Tammy. Hannah, it's a bit of a touchy uh, comment, but while I'm eternally grateful that the U.S. is a generous and conscious country, I do want to say that $13 billion going to other countries or hundreds of millions to others, while New York City, never mind the rest of this country, I don't care, we live here, has a tremendous financial uh, budget issue. We know we've had so many homeless killed. People are living on the streets in one of the richest countries in the world. And schools, the other day I saw a headline saying, you know, the budget is tough on the schools. Hannah, while we appreciate us taking care and worrying about other humans, which I'm all for, I do have to say that we haven't done a thing about the homeless. We just lost like four people and one especially, may I say Chuck, down in front of uh, Target, who sat there quietly for four years and we called him our resident, you know, our, our neighbor. And I do want to say that we should first maybe worry about ourselves when we have such deficits. So thank you for your hard work and for um, Jerry Nadler's, but um, this is what I had to say. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for Vicki, and let's see if we have anybody else's hands up. I have a hand up. It's Laura. Laura, and then Alice, and then Wendy. So in that order. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Um, thank you, Nadler's office. We had a resiliency meeting last night about the um, some work going on in the battery, and uh, we heard that Congressman Nadler was supporting the community's effort to get the uh, National Park Service's tent, the security tent where people go through security to board the Statue of Liberty ferries, which is sitting right in front of Castle Clinton and blocks um, movement along the waterfront in one of our major parks downtown. And I just wanted to say that the community really, really supports trying to relocate that tent to you know some other location that's not in our waterfront esplanade. And if there's anything the community can do to help support the congressman and his, his efforts to work with the National Park Service, we would be happy to do it. So thank you again to the congressman. Sure, and thank you for that. I will say that we are having ongoing meetings, so I'm happy to also report back once I have an update. But yes, absolutely, we will take you up on that. That would be really, really wonderful. It's it's very important, so thank you. I also kind of want to tag on to that, Hannah, that when we're talking that the Coast Guard building should not be off the table for usage for even a tent and staging and things like that. It's an office building, for goodness sakes. We hear you loud and clear. We will happily, we will continue the conversation about it. Okay. Um, uh, Alice, you're next. Hi there. Hi, Hannah. Thanks so much. And I, I did want to. Well, now just uh, that the resiliency stuff is brought up. Yeah, the Coast Guard situation is really quite extraordinary because it is a really vulnerable point, the most vulnerable point, it looks like, at the battery. So it has a lot of needs, and it would be really, really helpful to have a better understanding of what can and will potentially be done there. Um, so that's one. But what I really want to thank Congressman Eller for showing up at the rally for the Stop the Mega Jail this past weekend and for his support. And, you know, one of the alternatives that many organizations are looking at is to review the use of state facilities. Um, but, you know, we really never put to rest the idea of what will happen to the Metropolitan Correctional Center. And it seems it's a bit still unclear. And that has been brought up by the very architect who built the Metropolitan Correctional Center as to what, you know, what could it become? And could this in fact, help in terms of the needed additional space um, for the borough-based jail plans. So I would love to ask if we could have some more follow-up on the potential of that building and what, what will eventually become of it. Thank you. Absolutely. I will circle back and get some more information and happily or happy to set up another meeting or just continue the conversation. Thanks very much. Of course. Okay. Next, who had their hand up? Yeah, it was it was me. It's Wendy. I um, I I wanted to talk about all the same topics, but maybe to be a little bit more specific, um, the community is hoping that Pier A can be looked at. Uh, Worry Price has suggested a really great solution um, to put the uh, security tent either in Pier A or you know to uh, 
you know, to other the other suggestion of the uh, Coast Guard, but you know, maybe that's another solution, although it seems a little bit more difficult. But one of the things that was really shocking about the uh, fixing along, you know, they're going to raise the whole edge uh, along the battery, which is wonderful, but there doesn't seem to be any plan or money for the Coast Guard site, and that is the low point. And when we did have a conversation, um, it doesn't seem that the Coast Guard is very aware of what's happening. I, I know that their their main office is based out of Boston. Uh, nobody that was on the phone from us from New York seemed to understand that, you know, there was a big project in construction happening very soon. So the coordination between those who are working in the New York Coast Guard site and the Boston office and the project managers, um, I don't think that's, you know, maybe the congressman can help a little bit uh, on that front. So just uh, reiterating all the problems that that uh, this is not an easy solution that's going to need some help from from others. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, Laura, your hands are still up. I will come back to you if you still need it to. Otherwise, please put it down. Justine, you're next. Thanks so much. And Hannah, thanks for being here. Um, I guess I just would like to just reiterate uh, what everybody said about moving the tent, but I'm going to focus on the jail and focusing on putting the money towards using the facilities that are there. We have the tombs that needs to be rehabilitated to be useful is what I'm been, what we're being told. Rehabilitating the tombs will be so much more cost effective than tearing it all down and building a new jail and also be less um, oppressive uh, and less less disruption to the community. And it also would get people out of Rikers faster because it will happen faster. So whatever can be done to speed that along and have that be the iteration. No one's saying here that we don't want Rikers empty. No one's saying here that we don't want people taken care of. We do, we want these the inmates, the prisoners to be having a better situation, but there are alternatives to building a new jail, mega jail in Chinatown. And I would love to have as much support as possible to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. Um, seeing no other hands, we will move along. Oh, no, Eric, you, sorry, Eric, your hand is up. Um, thank you. Uh, I wasn't really planning to speak on this, but uh, there were some interesting points made. Um, I actually don't favor closing Rikers. Um, I know some atrocities have occurred, uh, but I think from a practical standpoint, we already have the facilities there. Um, also, we need to account for unpredict unpredictable demand uh, for, for, um, I don't want to use the word incarceration, but we might, you know, the world is an unpredictable place. We already have the, the real estate there. It's ideally suited because it's not surrounded by housing. Um, it's surrounded by water, which makes it isolated. So I, I just don't. I'd like to improve Rikers and I'd like to know what or who is really behind it. This is the last, I don't know if the last, but one of the last large open areas of New York City. I mean, who is or what is eyeing uh, what would be the use for that island if the prison is closed? Thank you. Okay. On that note, Hannah, I think we will uh, continue on. There's lots more discussions to be had, as you well know. We um, we are, you know, I'm winding back to Wendy's. We are all, all very interested of having that tent moved and what the options are necessarily not, you know, whether it's the Coast Guard building, whether it's Pier A, whether it's some other area that's worked in to provide better circulation uh, for the public better safety and better access to the existing amenities within the public realm is a conversation we need to completely continue. So I, so. I would happily encourage us, I'm gonna get, we, there's a bunch of conversations happening. I'm happy to set up some time for us to speak about it further. And so I more than happy to coordinate with you, Tammy. Perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Alrighty, moving on, we have Emily from Senator Kavanaugh's office is here. Emily Lang, you're next. 
And then after Emily, we'll go to our assembly members. I see we have Theo from assembly member new, and I believe Mariam is on from assembly member clicks as well. So when you hear your name, please raise your hand. Can you hear me, Tim? I can, Emily. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Good to be here. Um, I have a number of updates, so I will try and talk quickly. Uh, first off, on the legislative side, we're still in the middle of a very busy budget season. And uh, last week, the Senate released their one house budget proposal. We were really excited to see a lot of the senators big housing wins make it in, including 250 million dollars for the housing access voucher program, which would help families who are homeless or facing homelessness access permanent housing. So well as 500 million dollars in capital funding for NYCHA. The governor's budget included zero additional funding for NYCHA. So this is a good step forward, but still not as much as we need. Also, up to 1 billion dollars in state funding for ERAP, which currently has run out of funding as well as 500 million for the homeowners assistance fund, which is another program that is currently out of funding. And the senator's all electric buildings act, which was mentioned in the public session earlier was also included in the budget. So we are very, very excited about that. Uh, the final budget is due in less than 2 weeks so over the next 10 days. The legislature is going to continue negotiations with the governor and the senator will continue to fight for these housing priorities to make it into the final budget. On the community side, a couple of things uh, first on 250 water street. We're going to be continuing our monthly working group meetings on the brownfield cleanup program at 250 water after a little bit of a delay. Um, we look forward to getting the next one scheduled very soon. So for folks uh, on this call who are in the working group, I'll be sending more info on that soon. On five world trade center, we're continuing our conversations with the state agencies on expanding affordable housing at the site. We are looking forward to an upcoming meeting with colleagues, CB1 community advocates and the state agencies to discuss ideas and concrete options for maximizing affordability there. Next up on 20 exchange place, um, a residential building in FIDI. We have been working for the past several weeks with council uh, member Marte and assembly member news offices on the ongoing very severe elevator outage issues there had several meetings with the building con ed and city agencies to continue pushing them to work as quickly as they can. We're also in contact with all of the residents to make sure that they're receiving the protections and accommodations that they need. Final 2 things very quickly um, on Brooklyn bridge, Manhattan. Uh, we and our colleagues are continuing to push DOT to make progress on this. Specifically, we're working on setting up a walkthrough or meeting with the commissioner to talk about some of this in more detail and sort of push back on what we've been hearing from DOT and really make the case for these spaces to be opened up. And finally, um, our office still has KN95 masks and at home test kits, and we'll be receiving more from the governor soon. So if you know any organizations or just individuals who need those, please feel free to reach out and we can send those out. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much. That's awesome. Um, does anybody have any questions? Justine has a hand up. Justine, go. Sorry, trying to unmute myself and put my camera on so go. I can be seen. Thank you. Just give me a second because I'm losing my mind. All right. So, um, Emily, hey, how you doing? Thank you so much for being here and that brief summary. I have a question about um, the uh, new or the proposed uh, tax that Senator Kavanaugh has put forth <coughs> about making um, that, um, condominiums or homes above the value of 200,000, assessed at 200,000 or more, um, a, a tax and abating any tax for that, removing any abatement of tax for them. And my question is, how is that making it, making the home ownership more expensive for middle-class residents um, in line with keeping lower Manhattan affordable or making it more affordable. Sorry, I accidentally muted myself and then couldn't unmute. That's again. okay. I was doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for that question. I honestly am not very familiar with that legislation. I don't know the details of um, all of Brian's bills, but uh, do you want to send me that in an email and I can make sure to get you an answer? Or that would be answer. great. Thank you. I will, Emily. All righty, moving along, I see no other hands up. So, Emily, thank you very much and have a lovely evening. Happy March. Thanks, Tammy. And we're going to move to Theo from Assembly Member News Office. Theo. 
Did we lose Theo? Good evening, good people at Community Board One. I'm Theo Perez coming at you from the Office of Assembly Member Yulene New. A uh, couple of quick things to run by you all tonight. The first is regarding the state budget. As Emily mentioned, we are the end is nigh for that process. Um, so far, with the, the one house assembly budget that came out, things are looking good for a number of our top budget priorities. For instance, the assembly member fought very hard to get additional capital funding for NYCHA. Uh, we co-circulated a letter, we hosted a rally up in Albany, uh, and we're happy to see that the, the amount allocated in the assembly one house, $500 million, is the highest amount uh, proposed in, in a, a state budget to date. So we're hopeful on that. Another big priority of ours is the Asian American Pacific Islander equity budget. So far, signs bode well. This past week, we were at a round table with the governor and other AAPI community orgs and leaders. Uh, we seem to be on track to get that money, $64.5 million, both to address the current rise in anti-AAPI hate and to acknowledge historical violence towards and disinvestment from the AAPI community. On the legislative front, we have a couple of big things coming our way. First is this past week at a ceremony at the Javits Center, the governor signed into law two of our sexual harassment bills that we've been working very hard to pass. Uh, one of these bills would establish a statewide hotline for people to call to get uh, information uh, and counsel should they be seeking help after perhaps uh, experiencing a case of sexual harassment. Um, the other would be to close a loophole that exempted uh, state offices and politicians from the 2019 sexual harassment laws. Uh, beyond that, legislatively, we have the a bill that Hot off the presses, A9254, which is related to the Battery Park City Authority. We worked on in coalition with the Battery Park City Homeowners Coalition. This bill does a couple of things. Most notably, it would require that a majority of members of that board have their primary residence in Battery Park City. Uh, it was just introduced and we look forward to pushing for that, hopefully this term. Um, on the community front, we've been working on a, a number of different things. Uh, Yuli Nu was at the recent Chinatown anti-jail rally along with several other elected officials. We stand in solidarity with that group and we're hoping to do whatever we can to prevent the construction of the mega, excuse me, I'm having all these hiccups, the, the construction of the mega jail there. We also participated in an event hosted by the Music Workers Alliance in front of the Village Vanguard, supporting Senator Hoylman's proposal to have a fund specifically for um, musicians who've been impacted by the pandemic. Uh, we participated in a public safety community meeting uh, regarding NYCHA. And I see I'm close to time. So all I'll say on top of that is that we've been working alongside Senator Kavanaugh and Council Member Marte's office regarding the issues at 20 Exchange Place. Thank you. And I stand ready for any questions. <laughs> Thank you so much, Theo. And we, of course, love our cameras on for Community Board 1. So when you come and present with us, uh, we would appreciate if you we can see your smiling face. We know who you are. I do not see questions or hands up for you tonight. So thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next month, maybe even in person. Alrighty, let's move on to Marion. I think that's Marion from assembly member Glick's office. If so, she'll put her hand up. No, I'm not. I'm not seeing Miriam now. In the attendee section? No. Okay. Miriam, if you're there, no, I don't see Miriam. Let's see, hold on. I just reloaded it. Let me just see if. No. Gotcha. No, I'll let you know if uh, she pops back up. Perfect. So then let's move forward to Andrew Chang from Manhattan Borough President's office, and we will wind up with Max from Council Member Marte's office. We say the best for last. Sorry, Andrew. Good, e good evening, everybody. Um, first off, I want to talk about the community board applications, or the community board interview process and the applications. Uh, so, all applicants, regardless of whether that they're a first time applicant or re applicant, are going to participate in a virtual interview. Interview slots are being offered over the next two weeks. You should have gotten an email by now if your term is up for renewal this year and you reapplied. And uh, so please check that, uh, check your email and sign up for an interview slot. If you have any questions, you can you know reach out to me and I can get back to you. Uh, secondly, we're having a Women's History Month event at the end of the month. 
on Thursday, March 31st at the Eleanor Roosevelt House on 65th Street at 6 p.m. Please feel free to join us in person or via Zoom. More information to come. We're going to honor um, a few uh, women throughout Manhattan. Uh, as you all know, the open meetings law was was the suspension of the open meetings law was extended through April 15th. Uh, we're calling on Albany and the governor to establish a permanent hybrid model since that tends to be the most effective model for for most people. Um, at our most recent borough board meeting last week, we received a presentation from the independent budget office on the city's preliminary budget. Community board, as you all may know, community boards play a critical role in the budget process, and we look forward to receiving community board one's feedback on budget priorities. Um, the SYEP is um, is open, so if you know youth between the ages of 14 to 24, they may you know sign up and participate to receive a summer internship. And then lastly, the Manhattan Borough President has been distraught over the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Manhattan is home to a strong Russian community and we need to support them. Uh, he's been in the news calling for the seizure of Russian oligarchs uh, assets. Um, and that's it, that's all I have to report. Any questions? Yes, you do. So. Do I see you, Andrew, on this, or are you on by phone? I can turn on my video. Well, let me. Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, Francis, where... Pat, and then Bruce, hey. and then Laura. Hi, Francis Andrew. Is first. Uh, yes, regarding uh, the borough president's COVID follow-up initiatives. Uh, and actually, this is for all the electeds, because everybody is pushing these home health test kits, but I have not heard uh, if or how or if or how or is there any follow up in terms of how, how is this information being captured in terms of, you know, the results of people doing these home test kits? Uh, how do we, you know, how do we get the results to know whether the numbers are increasing or decreasing? Because we're hearing all of this stuff about the numbers are decreasing, but if everybody's doing home health test kits and, you know, they're coming out positive, unless they go to the hospital, I, I want to know how, how and is the home health kit, kits, are they being uh, tracked? How the but, information is being tracked. If information is being tracked. Uh, yeah, yes, that's, uh, that's that's a good question, Francis. I will um, bring this up to okay. my colleagues. And, you know, we, we have a COVID task force comprised of key community leader, leaders, including former Manhattan Deputy Borough President Aldrin Bonilla. And, and we also have um, Vax Daddy, a.k.a. Uh, Hugh Ma, from uh, from Queens on the task force. So let, yeah, let me um, check in with my colleagues and also with the COVID task force to see, um, you know, well, what is out there, what is how how this works regarding the data and the, okay. the tracking. Okay, with the previous uh, borough president, there was a task force of which I was a part of, so I could bring back information for community board one, and this would have been one of my questions on that. Uh, uh, at those meetings, I am, I was under the impression that community board one was going to be included in those task force meetings and I'm still waiting for some sort of notification. Uh, if that's going to happen, please let me know. Yes, I, I will let you know. Okay, awesome. All right. Thank you. Hi, Andrew. So. The um, hybrid model that's being proposed, would it allow for us to have voting privileges? Would we be able to vote? Well, so there, we don't know what the, uh, what Albany and the governor is going to do regarding future meetings, if they're going to extend the open, if they're going to continue suspending the open meeting slot, or if they're going to come up with a hybrid option. Just, we don't know yet. So, to, okay, so I, we hope I'm it's just, a program. Right. I'm just saying that, you know, the, the borough president is supportive of a hybrid option. Um, right. 
So I'm everybody. asking the hybrid model that he's supportive of, though, will it allow us to vote? Because what we were told so far is that the hybrid model that was being proposed uh, earlier would not allow us to vote. We could be there, we could speak, we could listen, but we couldn't have voting privileges. So I, I just would like the borough president to be, I, I'm sure he's aware of that, but that we want to make sure that if we go hybrid, those of us who cannot, who attend virtually have all the voting privileges. Understood. And uh, I will note that. And you know, that's definitely a Thank key you. issue. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Laura, you're next. And then yes, perhaps. just quickly, I was wondering why we have to re-interview to renew our um, applications to the board. That that was a decision made by, um, you know, the new borough president, the new, the new uh, new senior staff. Um, that their, um, that that was their decision. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, Bruce, and then Mariama. Do I sound like a rabbit, or can you hear me clearly this time? Oh, there's no chipmunks. You're good. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm good. I, thank you. I have two questions, one huge and one extremely parochial. The huge question is, will the Manhattan Borough President do anything besides urging uh, that we uh, commandeer oligarchs well? which I think is well well established, will we do anything involving uh, New York City welcoming Ukrainian refugees? That's my first question, uh, which is really, really to the point at this stage. I, I, you know, I, I can't speak on behalf of the Manhattan Borough President, but you know, I, I can't say that he is supportive of the Ukrainian community. And I think that would be something that he would most likely support welcoming Ukrainian refugees. But, um, you know, I will have to, uh, are, are you asking about specific policy measures or? Yes, yes. an active engagement to encourage X number of, or uh, enable X number of uh, Ukrainian refugees of which, as you know, there are over 2 million now to to be welcome in New York City. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like I said, he's he's that the borough president is supportive of uh, helping the Ukrainian community and um, you know folks who are fleeing Ukraine and resettling. As as you know, as to your specific um, questions, I will have to check to see what you know what he would actively do or what exactly he would actually support. Um, but okay. overall, he's supportive of the community. Okay, Bruce, this is yes. this is Lucian. Um, Hi, Lucian. You know, I think I think hey, I think you bring up a really great um, uh, idea, and and what I can do is I can make sure that uh, if if anyone wants to offer in CB one um, their abode to to support a family um, uh, as a, as a place for them, I'm happy. To, and this is for everyone who's on this meeting. Um, if you know anyone who would like to um, not so sort of sponsor, but provide a place uh, for a family, please let me know. I'll keep an internal list. So if that there is a program uh, that's organized by the borough president or the mayor or whomever, um, we, we can be ready. So if anybody does have interest, do let me know and I'll, I'll keep track um, and pass that along when the time comes, hopefully. Thank you. So the... The minor question is, I just looked through my emails and I, you know, I, I, I have all these emails about uh, people wanting, to, you know, a, a possible study yesterday and the, the, the email that, uh, you know, there's a deadline for the reapplication process. I did reapply, but there is no email regarding an, an interview appointment. So I, I, I don't know how to reach you or what shall I do? Yeah. So it. It's it came from this um, application that we're using called Calend Calendly C A L E N D L Y dot com. Um, it's it was an automated uh, email. Uh, please check your junk spam folder. Um, 
the subject should be, you know, um, something to do with Manhattan Community Board interviews. Or, and then also check emails from my colleague, um, Eric. This is like, this is, I'm sorry, I appreciate it, but this is. I, let me, I'll, 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 I will reach out to you separately and. Thank you. Uh, Yes. Thank you. You, you have my you have my shell. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I do. And, Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think Laura's hand is still up or up. I lost track. And then Mariama, or is it Mariama and then Laura? I'll go with Mariama then Laura. Thank you. I just wanted to reiterate Pat's point. Um, because you know, with 9-11 being so long ago, people tend not to think about it. So we have a number of members on the board um, that I know of and, and possibly some that I don't know of that are um, currently fighting diseases that they cannot afford to expose themselves to COVID. So it's beyond just not wanting to be in public. It, for health reasons, um, they cannot, and they should not use their, lose their right to vote um, because they're trying to protect their health. So it's really important that we can vote and be hybrid. Understood and uh, I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the whole key is to be able to allow quorum. And it does seem a little odd only because you get places like the state authorities that can hold, um, I use Battery Park City Authority as an example and other authorities who can have people who are not in state and yet eligible to vote on items for resolutions and passing things remotely. So, here, here. All right, I seeing no other hands up. Andrew, thank you. Oops, wait a minute. Gerald, I almost missed you. Hi, Tammy, thanks. Um, yes, and Andrew, um, quick question. Um, the 9-11 memorial, um, uh, do you, I'm not sure who has jurisdiction over that, but uh, is there any time frame for when the hours of operation are going to be extended? I mean, to me, that seems like a public seems like a public park, and and I walk by there daily, and um, there nobody's allowed in before 10 a.m. Uh, and then it's shut again at 5 p.m. I mean, I can't even can't even go into the park at all. Um, is there a time frame for when that might be open? I don't think Andrew is potentially the right person for that answer. They have come and they have presented uh, when they're to waterfront parks and cultural. Um, we will welcome them back because they were here last year. There was an opportunity. They are short staffed and short funded. Now we do know that the they did get a funding infusion. So let's have them come back and ask if they could present in April. Uh, Diana, if you don't mind, and we'll see if we can get that going. Thanks, Tammy. You're welcome. Certainly, Andrew, though, we'd love support from our borough president's office on that. Uh, Mariama, assuming you've already spoken and your hand is just not down. Rosa Chang, you're next and final. Thank you so much. I just want to jump on what Gerald was saying because I have the same bee in my bonnet. I pass by that place every single day, like four times a day. And it is infuriating to me that what feels like it should be a public park as you know, the public has invested significantly into its construction. Um, it, it, the fact that it's closed to only tourism hours and not to residence hours is so, so aggravating. And so, yes, I would love to, and I was at that waterfront meeting and I asked them the same question and we got those answers and they weren't good enough. So I would love it if we could have that opened up again. Thank you. Yeah, we do need to have a conversation because unlike what was old World Trade Center area, that entire area is not public. It is actually uh, not publicly owned. It's not run by a parks department at all. So, yeah. Alrighty, Andrew, thank you. Thank you so much. And I think that brings us to Max. Take us home, Max. You're our last rep update for the night. Is my camera on? I don't see yeah. you. I'm not seeing. Oh, okay. There we go. Hey, Max, how are right, you? There Thanks. we are. Okay. Good to see all of you. Uh, great to be back. I mean, as already been mentioned, as you all know, we had this Sunday 
crazy, crazy march through Chinatown. You know, estimates are for between one to 2,000 people who showed up. Just, I mean, if you, I think it's exciting just to think about, you know, we know the mayor was paying attention when 200, when we had a rally with 200 people. So to think about, you know, what might happen now that, you know, 2,000 people showed up, you know, we'll see what happens. And, you know, we'll obviously, we'll keep you all updated, you know, as developments uh, continue on that. Uh, the council member had a kind of a walking tour of outdoor dining sheds with the chair of consumer affairs and council member Marjorie Velasquez to really kind of show the exemptions we want for, for downtown, you know, show how this, the narrow streets in FIDI or Soho are different from different areas, you know, really make sure that, you know, as the open dining program continues, you know, there are lots of differences and kind of nuances made in, in, in whatever legislation comes to pass. Um, we've gotten a lot, a lot of press from everywhere from CNN to the Daily Mail about the 15 minute delivery app legislation, kind of a mix of curbing the industry and providing workers rights, uh, workers protections for 15 minute delivery app workers. So more on that in the coming weeks. Uh, the council member last week went with Tammy to visit the Harbor School. It looked like a lot of fun. I wish I could have been there. Um, but yeah, the council member is you know, fully supportive of their request for recreational facilities and is going to be working to gain support with from other elected officials to kind of write a letter and, you know, stand with the Harbor School and, and, and support, you know, support their requests. Really exciting, um, really important also, because this is happening before the next monthly meeting. We have participatory budgeting coming up the week is of April 4th to April 11th. Um, I can put in the chat. I don't know if it's possible to put in the chat and then it can sent, get sent to everyone in the general chat. Um, it'll you can yes. vote electronically, but we what we will also be having in person voting and you know what we'll having having volunteers with written ballots. You can go and vote on the kind of budget priorities you would like to see. And so yeah, it's a really cool opportunity. You know, we I I don't know exactly what's going to be on the ballot, but you know some really great some really great uh, options to you know have a voice in what gets funded in our district. And lastly, if you want to kind of stay updated on everything that's happening, we have a new newsletter, a new link for it. So I can also put that in the chat. A lot of people have come to us saying, we don't know how to get in, you know, we want updates. And so, you know, I think a lot of people don't know that we have a newsletter. So share the newsletter with everyone, you know, you know, we really want to make sure people stay up to date for things, especially like participatory budgeting. So yeah, that's it. And I'll put those things in the chat now and I'll take any questions. Awesome. Thank you very much, Max. We're going to go in order. Mariama, your hand is still up, followed by Rosa. Mariama, questions for our council members? All right, we'll go to Rosa Chang. Thank you. Hi, Max. How are you doing? Hi. Um, so um, I saw Christopher Marte at the rally this uh, morning for parks, so that was awesome. He um, it, he was kind enough to speak um, about our project, so we're very excited about that. Um, I was curious, actually, I had questions about participatory budgeting because I know that um, I have been talking to a lot of the neighborhood parks groups that include City Hall Park, Duane Park, Finn Park, um, Park Reliance, you have the idea, <laughs> there's a lot of parks. Um, and we were all curious because we had all submitted for participatory budgeting and we have no idea where we stand on that or, um, and, and we've sort of found it difficult to get a response on on who's in, who's out, why, when, um, how do we learn more? So if you could connect us up with someone who can actually uh, walk us through that participatory budget process since yeah. it's the first time we're doing it. I know it's probably the first time you're doing it too, yeah. but um, but we sort of, you know, it would, it would be good to know more and have as much uh, advanced information as possible so we can prepare ourselves. Yeah, so I mean, I know a little bit uh, kind of the processes. I know everything was all their proposals were sent to kind of each agency. So I guess for the park thing, they would have been sent to the parks department. They kind of would have gone through them all, seen which proposals kind of overlap, you know, kind of do a feasibility test, see what's actually possible. And then, you know, the lists are kind of narrowed down there. Um, as for, that's kind of the most I know, but yeah, I can get you in contact with Renee, who's our budget director, who's been overseeing and doing an amazing job, uh, you know, running our, our whole participatory budgeting program. So I can put his email in the chat if people don't have his email already. Actually, I do have his email. We, we've been trying to email him, um, but okay, maybe, maybe I'll reach out separately. And yeah, I think it's the, the past two weeks have been the, the, the city budget, you know, deadline. So he's been kind of working like, you know, 20 hour days basically for a while. Got you. Now, yeah, so things have been have calmed down now. So I think, you know, if you email him again, he should be able to get back to you. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Ron? Okay. 
thank you very much. We really appreciate you coming. Let me just double check to make sure I have no other hands up. And with no other hands up, thank you very much. And we will see you live and in person, if not next, if not sooner, I'm sure. Bye, everyone. Thanks a lot, Max. Okay, um, we are going to go straight Sammy? next. Yes. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. My my mic wasn't working before. This is Jess. I just want to say that that I'm here. Well, guess what? Your timing is perfect, Jess Coleman, because <laughs> we're about to go through. Uh, for those people who were not with us before, I need to audio make sure that you're here before we keep going. Um, usually, that'll come with the elect with the next roll call. But since I have a lot of people who jumped in, let's. Uh, I have Jess Coleman. You missed first roll call. Let's see. Mimi, who else? You want to do a second check on who was missing? See if they're back. Sure. Yeah, so I was missing um, Mark Amoruso. And Jess, um, is he still allowed to vote? He missed that vote. Can he vote now? He misses that vote, but we can recognize him for being here. I, uh, can I you hear me? Mark, oh, Mark. oh, Mark, you are here. Fantastic. Thank you, Mark, for adjusting. Mark Amaruso is present. Okay. Awesome. That's me. Gotcha. Z, Z is a yes. Okay, so Z is I here also. Not, I, I was also not. Uh, you skipped over alphabetically Bruce Airman. I, I was not on a roll for both. Okay. okay. So Z, gotcha. Z is also here. Airman is here. Joel Coppell is here. Capel is here. All right. One is, is, is that correct? Correct. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mimi. Liz Lamory is here as well. All right. Yeah, I got you. I saw you earlier. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Hi, Mimi. Me. Megan McHugh. Megan McHugh. All right. And obviously, you have me, Mimi. Yeah, you. Yeah, me. Uh, me, me should identify himself as Colin Mahoney. Got At least you were Mahoney. <laughs> Mahoney. For the record, that was Colin Mahoney. Exactly. So, Chow, I think that was you, correct? Yes. Okay, so that leaves, I'm going to give you a hand going backwards, Mimi. That leaves Judith Weinstock. I know Vera is not here. Bernard Lynn. Joe Lerner is excused. Trisha Joyce is not here. Kenny Grant. Mark is here. Okay, ready to roll. Let's uh, thank you, everybody. Let's hit it. District manager's report. And just so you know, everybody, we got through everything. Plenty of time for Q and A. Enjoying the way this is working. Thank you, everybody, for your participation, for your cameras on, and your brevity. So nice job, community board and public. Lucian, take it away. Thanks, Tammy. Um, I'm Lucian Reynolds, I'm the district manager of Manhattan Community Board One, and this is my report for March. First, I'd like to thank Pace University for offering their beautiful meeting room for tonight's meeting before the governor extended her executive order, allowing us to continue to meet remotely. I did tour the space with uh, Chantal Cabrera and the AV staff of the university. And I think that um, when we do end up having uh, an in-person meeting there, it will work quite well, especially a hybrid format meeting. Next month, we are requesting that uh, we use the borough president's large conference room but we have a plan to reduce the density of the members um, in response to some of the good feedback that we had last time we used that room. The current open meetings law allows us to have multiple locations. So we'll use our hybrid meeting skills to pull both rooms together uh, for the same meeting and allow our members to socially distance more comfortably across both rooms uh, using our um, special cameras. Of course, the executive order may be extended again. So this tentative plan may not need to happen in April. We shall keep working on other options and take the best path, best, best path forward at that time. So we'll keep on working on more locations, but keeping in mind that it isn't exactly uh, a menu of plenty for our needs at this at this moment. At the beginning of uh, this week, I joined Council Member uh, Marte and representatives of our uh, other elected officials in convening with almost every single city agency you can imagine and working out how to get the elevators of 20 exchange place back up and running. If you haven't heard, there's been a, a massive power issue uh, in that building for the, the low rise, mid rise and high rise apartments. Um, it is something that Con Edison uh, is locked in with 
the ownership and management of 20 Exchange Place. Uh, and uh, we got the Office of Emergency Management involved. Uh, so they're coordinating the efforts of HBD, DOB, and uh, everyone else you could possibly imagine. So um, hopefully um, some of these engineers will work out a solution to this issue. But uh, until then, I'll be uh, glued to this uh, uh, along with all the other elected officials' offices. So we're coordinating. Last week, I joined Tammy, Alice, and Tricia to visit the Harbor School and better understand their position about the proposed school, I'm sorry, proposed pool. Um, so looking forward to see how that conversation progresses. And with that, Tammy, I hand it back to you. Awesome. Let's work on the slides. So let's go for my slides. Thank you, Lucian. Next slide. We're going to be quick today. I like this. All right, so updates. That is a picture from the rally from Wendy Chapman. Thank you so much for sharing that picture. Really thank all the board members who went to um, support the basically the resolutions and the work we do through continued advocacy by going to the rally. Uh, what you may have missed was the Hudson River Park Advisory Council meeting that uh, was in March. I encourage everyone to come to the next one, April 12th. Before then, we hope BMCC has applied to be part of the advisory council, which is great to see a little more activism of those in our neighbor. So hopefully they will be approved by the full board. Downtown Alliance had their board meeting. We did a chat and chew March 11th. Um, community board for transportation meeting was all about redesigning the bike and pedestrian access ways in front of Chelsea Piers, which is up for their RFP renewal. Um, as everyone's talked about the Harbor School, this is more than just a, about the size of a gym and the size of a pool. It's an equity issue, quite frankly, to ensure that there is equity for the students and such an amazing school that we have in our community. Borough Board was the 17th. Um, we were supposed to be in person and then the night of the 16th, it got announced to be very much hybrid. So it was interesting to see the split about half the community board people showed up in person and other balance of us were in virtual. So it was really nice to see. And next slide. Okay. Still waiting to hear some great news for the Brooklyn Bridge Manhattan EDC's timetable. And we understand that uh, the Battery Park City Authority going to PDC. We've not heard back from the congestion pricing panel if we can have a residential rep for lower Manhattan. Looking ahead, we do have next week a 250 Water Street Working Group meeting, as well as five World Trade Center. Chat and Chew will be on April 8th, so again, the second Friday of the month. It will be at lunch hour unless I hear an overwhelming, gee, we'd like to have it at cocktails. Um, and virtual meetings is now extended through April 15th, which means that Friday, April 15th will be the last one and the following week's meetings will be hybrid unless there's another motion or legislation or executive action made. Okay. We have two task forces that are official for 2022 to 23, the street co-naming and the public restrooms. Uh, if you'd like to be interested in anything on street co-naming, please talk to Betty or Alice. Public restrooms, please talk to Mimi and Pat. Um, also for New York Presbyterian Lower Manhattan Hospital, there's a community advisory board. I wanna do a really great thank you for Francis Curtis who has served so diligently for, oh, I think a couple years now um, on that advisory board and, and is now coming off and Dr. Betty Kay will be the new rep on that advisory board for CB1. So there are lots of changes as always in the spring. And we have uh, several coming for ourselves. So let's hit the next slide, Liz. Do we get your camera on, Liz? So we want to say thank you to Liz Lemaire. Liz is decided not to uh, reapply for the board. And what makes it so amazing is she has been fighting for Lower Manhattan as a board member on Community Board 1 since 2006. I think 16 years of public service is an incredible milestone. And I 
we cannot do, I wish we were in person so we could all give her a hug and wish her the best, but this is what I have and to say. And Liz, would you like to say anything for yourself? Yes, thank you so much, Tammy. And I just want to express, it's been truly an honor and a pleasure working with all of you on CB1. I can't believe it's been 16 years, where does the time go? But I'm so grateful to have been part of the important work done by this community board and so appreciative of all the dedication and hard work that goes into it. Um, so I, I really wanna say thank you to all of you. Um, I do plan to keep in touch and to stay abreast of the, the uh, ongoing pressing issues and hope to see you in person again soon. But, but thank you, I, I really appreciate it. Thank keep you. Keep fighting. Exactly, <laughs> and we'd love the picture. And if people don't know i mean it's so amazing when we're in person you see so much of the people and the personalities um if you want the link please you guys all have liz's contact before it gets changed mm -hmm. for the next season come and listen to her sing buy the music enjoy her thank next you. endeavors so thank, thank you, you Tammy. Liz, for your service it's been amazing um, we have three other board members who eventually will be leaving us, but Jeff Myhawk has decided this month he's going to step down from being a full board member to being a public member. So he doesn't get a send off because he'll be still be stuck with us on Youth and Ed. And um, we move on from here. With that, again, Liz, all my thanks. And it's been a pleasure. I pass the baton and close my chair report. And that brings us to election of the nominating committee, Mr. Reynolds. Or is this Lucy? Well, I'll let Lucy take the lead on this. Lucy is definitely our um, resident uh, staff with most experience in this. So we have five people that have nominated themselves or someone nominated them. You can see them on the screen. Susan Cole, Eric Flores, Jeff. Galloway, Marion James, and Pat Moore. Are there any nominations off the floor? Hearing no seen, nominations. Oh, yeah. There are no, and I see no hands. <laughs> We're not seeing any nominations off the floor. Nominating committee has been closed. We are requesting the secretary to place cast one vote for the entire slate. Uh, so voted. Congratulations, I'll let you know in April when the meeting is. And Miss Lucy, for the record, would do we now call you instead of Ms. Acevedo, do we now call you Ms. Diaz? It is or actually Mujica Lucy, Diaz. it's both last names, Lucy Mujica Diaz, but thank you. Oh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> I know, if you look at my email, if you look at my email, I made them do MD. <laughs> I see. How about this, thank Ms. You, Lucy? Everyone. Ms. Lucy. <laughs> exactly. All righty. Well, thank you so much. Let's move on to our executive committee reports and get rolling. Uh, I have one resolution and three reports. Um, I'm going to start with the report that I thought was the most uh, interesting because we've already talked about some of the other stuff. We, um, if you did not get have a chance to read the demographics update that was done by our phenomenal um, team. Please, 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 please do. This is the work that we have been long looking at and starting to take a look at the zoning. And there have been so many proposals top down from governmental officials looking at what they think our zoning needs, um, including the governor looking at caps and the new text amendments that we've gotten and the open restaurants and everything else. Really take a look at what our new demographics are. And James, who did a phenomenal job uh, in putting all that together because it will be topics coming forward. I'm not going to review it because I really think it is the duty of every member of the board to read that presentation. Um, we also are looking to fill the position for Jen. If you know somebody who you think would be great, please refer them to the office. And in the meanwhile, it has been listed on beta. We aren't getting any bites, so we would like to shop that out to universities and other places. That's my reporting. And then for the resolution, can we put the reso up? Oop, there we go. So everyone who has been on the board for a long time knows we used to have LN triple C, which was a construction command center that was amazing and was able to coordinate to have the lowest impact and a place to go back to 
really coordinate all the projects that were happening in lower Manhattan. We have a bucket of resiliency related projects that are coming that will highly affect and diminish our public space, which includes everything from the Battery Park City Authority from the point of the Jewish Heritage Museum to the entire Wagner Park being gone for two years and large sections from the front of Pier A as well as all the way across the top of Battery Park to um, the bottom of Broadway, potentially even Whitehall. So we want the city and the state to work together to have something comparable to LM C to coordinate because this is otherwise going to be worse than Worth Street. So do I have any hands up or any questions? Seeing none, uh, I'll call the question. Do I get a second? Second. I'll second. Second. Great. All right. Uh, for if you we're going to do vote by affirmation, but if you were not here to approve the minutes, you must call out your last name and your vote for the record because this is your first call in. Is it cool if I just call them out by name real quick and then do the rest? Absolutely. That works for me, Mimi. Go for it. Awesome. All right. And Marusa? Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, Coleman? Thank you. Airman? Yes. Thank you. And Capel? Yes. Thank you. And Lamry? Yes. Thank you. And uh, Mahoney? Mahoney, yes. Thank you. McHugh? Yes. Thank you. Myhawk? And uh, Z. Ciao. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And uh, did I hear my hawk in there? Or was that? He is not. He texted me. He's not. Oh, okay. Got it. Um. All right. So my hawk's not here for the rest of the session. Is that true? Maybe Grant just showed up. Oh. Hey, Grant. Would you uh, be interested in voting real quick for this executive coastal resiliency resolution? Kenny? I see him. We'll need a verbal vote. <clears throat> I know. All right. All right. All right. Go, through the, go through the nays, abstentions, recusals. Maybe he'll unmute by then. Sure thing. Uh, anybody oppose? Any abstentions? Are there any recusals? All right. Kenny Grant, to be marked present for attendance, you must unmute and vote orally because we don't have you from the first vote. I'm a yay. So that was Grant. Yes, he unmuted himself and spoke. Awesome. Can you do me okay. a favor? Next time, no problem. It's a Grant votes yes. Yes, Grant votes yes. Sorry. Awesome. That's okay. Yeah. You're on. You're perfect. Awesome. With that, I close my chair report and my committee and let's move to the next one. Thank you very much, everybody. Battery Park City, Justine, you're up. Woohoo, so excited to be going first. All right, so good morning, good evening, everybody. And um, the good news is I have no resolutions, just reports this month, but um, I'm gonna go with the contentious one first, which was South End Avenue streetscape project. Um, basically, we talked about the, the Venice Park City Authority presented their plan and design for the redesign of South End Avenue from Liberty Street to West Tame Street and like kind of taking in the edges. And this was based on a resolution that this that our committee, the Battery Park City Committee, had done back, I believe, in 2016. We had finalized it and we said yes. Took them a few more years to get up and running. They had plans that I believe were as of 2018. Well, it's 2022, and the and our committee and the and the community folks that called into the committee said very clearly, pause. 
let's go back to the drawing board because things have changed on the streetscape since then in the time we've had a traffic light put in at rector at, at the corner of rector and south end avenue there were even folks on the call and a number of them so it's not just like one or two who said they didn't want south end avenue between liberty and albany street changed up they thought it was fine the way it was we revisited the fact that many people myself included um are feel better about having the uh, medians in the, in the middle of South End Avenue be just painted on the street because we see no place for the for the big trucks to park. Um, so a lot of contention. Um, nobody's saying go back to the drawing board from square one, but they are saying we need to go back to the drawing board. Um, and I will tell you <laughs> that uh, there was a lot of yelling going on. I think that even uh, Bob Schneck came to my defense to protect me, and I really appreciate that because he was very sweet. Um, not that it was needing protection, but people were were a little crazed. Um, and then what else? The other thing we talked about was kind of teeing up for uh, last night's environmental committee. Um, the Battery Park City Authority gave some a short presentation and a short discussion on resiliency and the south um, staging and um, the south Battery Park City uh, resiliency project. We talked a little bit in the committee about financing after listening to the more full presentation at, at uh, the environmental committee that Alice's committee was last night, um, I believe Lucian, so make a note of this one, we're gonna need to have the authority come back and do more discussion about things that are kind of specific to Battery Park City versus um, specific to resiliency as a whole. And um, with that, I will kind of push it off and, and tee up to the next committee. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. I'm moving along. Oh, I see Bruce Ehrman has his hand up. Bruce, is your oh, hand Oh, go ahead, up? Bruce, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's a great report, um, and uh, I always have something to say, so stop me. But <laughs> I, right. I tried to speak in the executive uh, committee report. All I wanna say is that, uh, wow, I didn't know Liz was leaving, and I really, really am gonna miss her, and I'm like in a state of shock, and I'm beginning to feel like a dinosaur, and that's what I wanted to say, and also to ask whether we can have a consolidated list of all of our current uh, public official and aid contacts. I'm, I'm, I'm getting lost in all the presentations and the emails. All you have so to do, Bruce, is ask the office. Absolutely, we have one, it's on file, and you can also check the website. They're all listed thank there. Thank you. You're welcome. All okay. right, I think Moving that's on. it. Thank Jeremy. you. Yep. Thank you so much, Justine. Landmarks, Jason Friedman. And after landmarks comes transportation. Hi, guys. Um, we had uh, a couple presentations. I don't know if anyone's putting anything up on the, the, the board here. Yep, there we go. Uh, 6264 Reed Street. Um, which are these handsome store loft, typical 19th century buildings here. Um, the applicant is proposing a complete uh, renovation of the inside of the buildings, uh, removal of the fire escape you see on the right, extension of the fire escape you see on the left to reach a uh, one and a half story addition, which has minimal as a visibility from the east on Broadway, very minimal visibility. It's not particularly, um, you know, aggressively high. We we did make a statement in our approval that um, we wouldn't be in favor of any sort of addition uh, if the applicant chose to remove all of the fire shutters uh, that were in that was in a, a slide a couple slides ago at the rear of the two buildings. They have all of their fire shutters. So we we made a statement that we'd like to see them reinstate those fire shutters because they're very um, typical of the, the interior blocks in Tribeca and in any of those three districts that we have here, historic districts. So we had an approval, but uh, we say that, you know, like I said, we say we want you to keep the uh, fire shutters on the back. Uh, I think that was unanimously voted on. Uh, and then the second project was 
um, 140 Broadway, something that the committee saw a couple times. Um, the applicant made changes to their plan for the sidewalk renovation of this very, very attractive granite uh, corner at West Broadway and Thomas across from the Odeon. And the applicant listened to our recommendations and, and met with uh, some of us and uh, came forward with an improved plan that's more um, in keeping with the ma keeping materials that are there and reusing them and also adding um, in kind granite materials in that red area uh, along West Broadway, which of course is a, you know, quite expensive and much appreciated uh, addition to that uh, corner. Um, and then we also offline wrote a very brief resolution, which I think is new business uh, for asking uh, that they, that um, the budget doesn't cut uh, any sort of landmarks uh, monies for uh, their offices. And uh, in fact, that we need more uh, money in the budget for our landmark offices. So, uh, and that's it. So we could take everything together that can be taken together. And um, I can answer any questions if there are any. Yep, you've got Bruce's hand up. This is my last comment, unless it's an emergency. I, I just want to say that uh, <laughs> the 140 West Broadway applicant went from a radically uh, uh, inappropriate uh, uh, and expensive solution to the issue to an incredibly uh, accommodating and expensive solution based on the community board's input. And the same goes for the owner of the property. So I just want to just want to thank them for, for an unusually uh, cooperative procedure. Okay, Charles. Can I call the question? No, you've got another hand up, Susan. But uh, I I would say after this hand, if there are no objections, I would be happy to say to second that. So, Gerald. Thanks. Um, I guess I'm asking the committee members. I seem to have recalled for 62, uh, 64 Reed Street. There was a discussion regarding um, some um, ice and possibly even water mitigation um, on the addition as as a way to protect the public at the ground level. I thought that was uh, what we were voting on as part of the resolution, and I believe that the um, applicant had agreed to that. Uh, it is a, um, I mean, it was done historically as well as, as uh, you know, being done nowadays. As, uh, and and the <clears throat> the addition is substantially um, that roof that roof plane is 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 very steep. We're not talking about a um, a flat roof there. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I thought that was going to be in the uh, resolution. I have no problem adding it. All right, thanks, Jason. Hey, Jason, seeing no other hands up. Susan, did you want to say something? I want to call the question. I'll second that. Mimi, take it away. Almost forgot to unmute. That would have been weird. Okay, so we're doing all of these together, correct? <clears throat> yes. Awesome. All right, anybody opposed? anything any abstentions any recusals all right everybody says yes win that's a winner okay jason thank you very very much let's rock and roll betty you've got four reports no resos rock and roll well, no, actually, and after betty is out Ooh, and after betty is alice and then after alice is paul Betty, you must have mute. Betty, you're muted. Still on mute. Testing one, two. Nope, muted. 
Hold on, Betty. I'm going to try the thing that worked last time. I'm going to move you over to 10D and move you back. Please sit tight. Or we can, we can, if it doesn't, we can come back to her and uh, we can go to Alice. Okay. Give it, give it a shot. It was weird because we heard her for a second. Yeah, then it cut out. Uh, All right, so work with Betty and we'll move to Alice and then come back to Betty. Alice, you ready to roll? Yeah, I just need Diana to pull up the slides. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. So it was a very long night and I'll try really hard to make it short. Um, so we started with the 250 Water Street Brownfield cleanup program with Laura Dodge, our independent consultant. And thankfully, nothing of significance has been found with no elevated mercury trace counts. So we're looking good there. Um, remedial action plan draft will be sent around this month, which we'll be reviewing. The parking lot, so we've got some interesting information that many of us uh, were, were not aware of. The parking lot will close on or around April 15th and eight foot high solid construction fencing will be going up soon, either around the whole lot or around the Northwest corner. We learned that in order for Howard Hughes to attain tax benefits from the 421A program, they must complete the initial phase of foundation work by June. So we learned, and we were somewhat surprised that some of the pile clusters will be already begun at a depth of between 65 to 85 feet um, at the southwest corner of the site uh, next month. Um, and will take 45 to 60 days to complete. This um, made it all the more important to get our working group meeting for the 250 Water Street group uh, up and running. And as you heard from Emily Lang, that is happening imminently, which will be very helpful to get more details on and be prepared for the for the, the obvious impacts that this will cause in the neighborhood. Um, okay, next were the we had the Lower Manhattan Coastal Resiliency, the battery design and the South Battery plans. Uh, Battery Park City Authority, that is. So uh, here you're seeing the battery, the park plans, and this is a PDC, Public Design Commission update, which will prepare before them, I think pretty soon. Um, we weren't given a date. Um, next slide. So many of these things you've seen before, there were certain um, areas that had been changed, but basically our resolution from the last time that we looked at this is not that many months ago, there hasn't been that much that's changed, um, except to see something with a new tie-in now. You could see that there's two tie-ins that are new. One is to Pier A, that's not new, that's one that we know about, and then the East End tie-in. And what was of concern and remains of concern is the very different elevational heights at each point, whether it's 11 on one side, 18 at another. It's still unclear as to why this slide attempts to make that clear, but I think that's still something that we would like a little more information about. Anyway, next slide. This are the plans. These are the plans. You see the existing condition. You see the proposed. That's the final plan on the bottom. And what you're looking at along the, the edge is the five foot uh, wharf extension going up, um, and the five and the four different slips that are being presented as the new slips for the boats, and uh, the new circulation pattern. And what we're hoping for, which again was alluded to earlier, is the removal of the new the security tent and the use of pier. A as a possible place to have people come and go through, and that would make a, a great deal of sense. And so there was some concentration of allowing the plans to have flexibility so that one could reach the boats as well as get to a new area for security on Pier A. And they assured us that that was being reviewed. Um, next slide. And this slide just was very helpful to see um, the red is where, um, of course, there's extremely vulnerable area of the most vulnerable and you'd see the 2 breach points and those surround the Coast Guard Center. So, again, what was brought up earlier, we we're very eager to have a lot more review of the Coast Guard building the Coast Guard site, how that is going to be used 
and how that will be made more resilient. And we are looking forward to having that as become part of the discussion right now. It really isn't. And it's sort of left out there to, you know, quite vulnerable as a site. And, you know, why can't that be used um, and sort of more co coherently in the plan is something that we're hoping for some resolution in the future. So that that's that piece. Next. And so this is just one of many sites and uh, slides. And by the way, this is all available. Diana will probably put this up either in the chat or will be on our website. But there are many, many pictures of this and lots of plans. But I've just picked out one here, which shows the East End tie in. And it gives you a good idea of how far up you'll be going. This is now rising up about seven feet. So that's the view you'll have now. And um, it gives a bit of a sense of the. You know, still the beauty of the park, trying to maintain that as being, uh, you know, very, very important. And Rory Price, who's the head of the Conservancy, is very pleased with this, or pleased and accepting of this part of the plan, I should say. And she was there last night. Next slide. This is another uh, spot looking at the Pier A tie-in, so going from Pier A down um, and still elevated, of course, above. Next slide. This is a slide that shows um, quite a few additional bollards that'll be put up along the coastal edge there on the wharf. Um, and these, there'll be uh, panels, art panels. And so they're pretty much doubling. So we, we had 19, now we're gonna have 29 bollards and 37 art panels. And that shows you a little bit of what this would look like. There wasn't a great deal of information on that, but that gives you a sense. Next slide. And of course, the you know uh, scheduling of this, and the final design will presumably be done by. It seemed to me like they the, the, this shows May, but in fact they had mentioned September, but it's imminent, and so we will be giving a letter to them for the PDC that will go in tandem with our earlier resolution, indicating some of the things that were said last night. And um, making sure that they're aware of some of our additional concerns about the plan, but generally speaking, everything was accepted and with concentration on the Coast Guard and the um, security tent being uh, considered more specifically. Okay, next slide. Okay, so next we have the. South Battery Park resiliency plans. We started with an interior drainage. Um, these are new. This uh, this is these are surface isolation uh, interior drainage positions that are used instead of these. I don't know if you remember the these very large gate buildings that we had earlier. So this is a real win. Um, but we didn't get a lot of information on this, and they have promised the day being the South Battery Park City team to come back with sections plans showing location and dimensions of all of this. Um, next slide. So, um, this is big news, but, um, just to, everyone should know that yes, the Wagner park is coming down. Um, as is the pavilion, the Machado and Silvetti pavilion, the Lori Olin landscape will be no longer. That is as of July of this year, it will be a 2 year project and this shows you sort of the staging areas and what were, what will be closed down. The Museum of Jewish Heritage, we promised, will remain open and always will have access to the museum. Um, there was what uh, Justine was alluding to is they will come back and it's well placed in the Battery Park City Committee to look very carefully at what these plans are. And we've asked them for plans and sections, or sorry, plans of um, the bike path, the pedestrian path, the bus routes, et cetera, very clearly noted that we can start to publicize and people start to prepare for what this these impacts will be. Next slide. There will be site signage um, that will include a little bit of what you know is to come, maybe some history. There was some thoughts about what that signage could have on it, and you know we welcome anybody's thoughts about that. And you can see this picture tries to show what that would look like. Next slide. And this is the project. General construction information, the hours, Mondays through Fridays, 7 to 3.30, that may be amended. Again, Justine will be taking that up in her committee, as well as on Saturdays, 8 to 4, um, and the other 
aspects, but these paths that they're referring to will be something that we will be able to see and opine on in the future, near future. Next slide. So lastly was the, uh, of the design update uh, for the public design commission um, on the four different parts of the project, the museum, well, we didn't receive anything on the Museum of Jewish Heritage site, but the Wagner Park site, the Pirate Plaza site, and the Battery. Next slide. This is an entry slide that shows actually what jurisdiction the Public Design Commission has. In other words, what is the city really allowed to opine on? And that purple crescent is really all that we are able to talk to the PDC about and we have offered, already offered a resolution and we'll back this up again with another letter um, in demonstrating last night's committee's efforts. Next slide. This shows the final design update for Pier 8 Plaza. I mean, to go into this would take all night, but let's just say there weren't any critical new changes here that from the last time you saw it, like it or not, that's what we've got. Next slide. This is what it will look like from looking north. Next slide. This is the final design update for the battery area and the flood wall. That flood wall is that large block in gray that says exposed flood wall facade. Um, and again, not many changes here. And, and I, in fairness, certainly Battery Park City Authority attempted to listen to Warrior Price of the Conservancy and our community board, but there were very few of the changes that we had asked for made, but such is life. Um, anyway, next slide. So this is the exposed flood wheel of the previous design. And if you bother, if you can read these different aspects that they are attempting to address that were comments from um, Department of Parks and PDC and attempting to make the changes they requested. The next slide. That is the now new flood wall design. Difference in materials, difference in the edge work um, and the like, the details of which were um, profound but and available again. One of the things that they had asked for, PDC that is, to Battery Park was authority was to uh, provide a model. And I'm very happy to announce that we, we were told that we could um, indeed see this model, which we're hoping will end up somewhere in Battery Park City. Um, and people can actually go see the flood wall construction as a model as well as the new pavilion. And we will keep you posted as to when that will be, um, you know, available. Next slide. And lastly, the um, we looked at the the uh, battery place um, and the entry to the pavilion. You may all recall that this community board was pretty upset that there was no entry from ground level. There still isn't, except up these 150 foot approximate 150 foot long ramps. So in order to enter the building, one doesn't enter at ground level still, but um, there were some changes made to the actual service entrance. Next slide. And that is, oops, not sure what happened there, but uh, yeah, that was that is the new uh, coloring of the service entrance, which is at the ground level, which was once a gray stone, which has now been made a, a, a matching red concrete. I'm not sure that's an improvement, but some people thought perhaps it's a warmer tone. In any case, that plus adding uh, uh, some foliage onto the top of the building is, you know, some trying to green the building slightly and make a softer edge was done and hopefully will be something that will work better. Um, next slide. Oh, that's it. Okay, so that's it. Um, I, you know, I encourage everyone to look carefully at the plans if they get some free time because they are really comprehensive. But we will be writing up this letter very soon to give to PDC, which will identify all the things I've just talked about and others that were mentioned yesterday. And we'll let you know about the plans for the pedestrian path, the bike path, the MTA bus thing, the 
uh, the, and we're also getting tours. Oh, I meant to mention that we're having, um, we're going to have tours of the park to be given during Earth Week, which begins April 16th to the 22nd. So we can have, we can walk around the park much as what was done on the north side for anyone who did those tours earlier this year. And the models, of course, will also be available. So, um, and then also, um, Wendy Chapman had a very lovely suggestion of having some sort of ceremony at the closure of the park. Many people are very sad to see this go. And so the authority is also willing to consider something to that effect. That is it. Thank you. Okay. Alice, you have two resolutions, so we need to go back to the there are no resolutions, Tamia. That's what I was saying. We decided okay. that they were going to be um, letters instead of resolutions. So, uh, yeah, I do remember that. I have a question for you on the the gates, the the floodgates that they had. Um, initially, there was going to be space taken, public space taken out of, for example, West Thames Park. Um, I can't tell. The on the size of that, whether or not the You're talking about the drainage, mm -hmm. they're actually um, we were talking. Yeah, I mean, we, we criticized them and rightly so for this plan, which was absurdly small and very difficult to read and understand, and had no understanding of really what we were talking yep. about in scale. But we were told they're the size of mail um, manhole covers. Um, these are have nothing to do with the earlier large interceptor buildings, but rather they're just pressure proof existing manholes that are covers that sit on top of some sort of chimney. And it's for surge for for surge in unprotected adjacent areas that that you know that you, you have to have a level of sophistication. I certainly don't understand what's going on be, below them. But assuming they work, what's above the the is not supposed to be very consequential. But again, when uh, Dawson had promised that she would get us these plans ASAP so we can see the scale and location more definitively. They were described okay. as that existing location, so. Thanks. Thanks, I Jeff. Adding three, though, um, Jeff, was, was my, my recollection. So we've got three hands up beyond Jeff's. We'll get clarification and be able to share all that. That would be wonderful. Um, we'll go Justine, Sarah, and then Eric. Thank you. So I'll be quick. I, um, uh, Alice uh, mentioned the two things I wanted to say, which was the walkthrough that they're going to do and um, Wendy's idea about a, about a uh, recognition ceremony, which is great. Just kind of say goodbye to the park. But about these, this picture here, I want to call everybody's attention to the fact that one of them, and I can't tell, but the one that's right by uh, West Thames Park, like by the end, close to West Thames Street, <laughs> um, that is a sanitation uh, a manhole. Now they said it will be sealed from the top, but it is a place and it looks like if it, if it seems to be the same as everything else, it is a catchment and it's for overflow. And it's kind of horrifying that it's right there by uh, Liberty. Uh, it's on that the side. That's the one that said is already side. there though, Justine. Right. There isn't none. I don't think that one's there already, unless it's underground already. It is under, that's what they said. I yeah, they did mention it. that. I think there were three additional new ones, but I think we might want to just get those plans yeah. and then sort of we'll attack get the it. Plans. Exactly. It. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. But good. Thank, Thank you. you point. Point. Sarah, okay. you're next. And then Eric, you. I'm, I'm, and then when Paul is Gino closing? I'm sorry, Sarah. When is Gugino closing? To Gina's. Oh, that's a good question. We didn't get that piece of information, but July is when... with the park park. In... Oh, is that right? So that would be July. And they will not be back. Correct. I don't, don't know, know that... that answer. Yeah, we'll find out. That's a good question. I, I would love to know. That would be interesting. Yeah, good question. Uh, we can certainly ask that question. If you want to email me, we'll forward that along. I'm sure it has to do with an RFP process. Terrific. And, everything awesome. else. and Sarah, remember it for our meeting. Uh, perfect. Anything Eric? else, Sarah? Eric, you're up, and then Paul Gold. Uh, no, I, 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 I was curious about the drains, but Justine covered it. Perfect. Okay. Eric, and then Paul. Yeah. Hi. I, I have a question about the the hours of work. Uh, on on the slide, you show the hours of work. I, I, I don't recall this exact start time. I think it was seven thirty to. 3 30. Oh, it's 7 a.m. It's 7 a.m. to 3 30 p.m. Okay. Um, is it 
look, part of the event of other people has already said this. I'm a little late to this. Uh, no. I, I would think I would prefer them to work longer hours to finish the job, um, especially if if it's if it's work that's more interior to the park. Is is that is that an oh it says shifts shifts may be extended. Okay. All right. Because I I I'd hate for uh construction sites to lay you know to to lay idle while nobody can use the park. But I see here that that you have this already that can be extended. So I, I missed that. But okay. All right. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, no, thanks, Eric. By the way, these aren't our hours. This is what was provided to us. This is their hours. But yeah, you know, it's it's um I guess it's up to I mean, it is it is concerning because I will say that none of this was shared directly with the school um, or the school community that it directly affects across the street in terms of noise and access and buses. So uh, we'll go there another day. Eric, anything else? No, thank you. Paul Goldstein. Thank you. I was just going to say that when and if <laughs> the time comes to work on the reconstruction and specifically the redesign of park spaces, be that Wagner Park or any of the others that are gonna be closed, it would seem that it would make sense if we have a parks committee for the parks committee to take the lead on designing park spaces. I mean, we do that everywhere else in the district when there's design issues at Hudson River Park, we take the lead. Uh, whether there's design issues, you know, on the east side, we take I the I think lead. what happened here, Paul, was early on before when it was a resiliency subcommittee, this came to us entirely as a resiliency effort. And of course, you know, presumably still stays. So I, I agree that I think it would be great to have it um, when it's you know, when there's obviously an overlap between the resiliency and park to have both committees working on this and overseeing it. I think it's a fine idea. Yeah. And also throw in Battery Park City Committee because this is our backyard. So we're going right. to want to make sure that we're all connected. Well, More sure. eyes, the better. The other committee should have a major role. But I mean, if this board has a parks committee, the parks committee should have jurisdiction over some of these issues. And I think there are still design issues that need to be worked yeah. through. So well, certainly let, every, Paul, certainly everybody has always been welcome to come. These meetings have been going on for four years. This has been a very well, long time. Tammy, I don't want to be forced to attend every other committee. I don't think everyone on the parks committee should need to go to you know, the Battery Park City Committee, if they think that parks should be designed in the Parks Committee. So I don't understand that park is supposed to serve everyone. And I respect completely the needs and the special needs of Battery Park City. But I think, uh, again, if we have a Parks Committee, this is really doesn't make much sense if we have an opportunity I, from the get-go to give it to that committee and let the other committees join us when if they have interest paul the battery park city committee is a yeah. committee that deals with all things for the state authority right everything that has to do with what the state authority does in its land space that's what the battery park city committee is which is why it was and it was first sold to community board one in the public that this was a resiliency project only yeah. and if you remember back in the very beginning and if you look at any of the resolutions that we passed we insisted on keeping that beautiful structure and them abiding by what they initially said which was that resiliency measures could be done in the park protected without demolishing the building then they came back and said there was budget issues and that the R and M on the building did long term life of Battery Park City Authority would be better spent in knocking everything down. But it has always been a resiliency project first and foremost. 
and with the park redesign that came in much later because we didn't ask for a park redesign. We mm -hmm. actually fought tooth and nail against a park redesign and lost at every point because the governor wanted to do it. Yep. Along with exactly when he decided he wanted to put statues where he wants to put statues and new memorials where he wanted to put new memorials. The public and the community has had very little opportunity to really make effective change because it's a state authority. And they don't need to do the incredible processes that a regular parks department or DOT does. As Alice can easily tell you, the amount of opportunities that we've had to opine and come back and forth has all been bracketed within the Battery Park City Authority, other than a very minute amount that's gone to PDC as it relates to Battery Place. Even Warry Price and the Parks Department, which we did appeal to, yep. said this is a Battery Park City Authority project. So I hear what you're saying. Oh, it is. Certainly... There's no we question can... that it's a Battery Park City. That is not my contention. It's the contention is if you're designing a park and you have a parks committee, it just does. It defies logic. That, oh. I mean, again, we you, take the lead on Hudson River Park, which is also a state entity. And because uh, we don't have let's let's not let's not go through this here and now we can certainly look at the next park because they are ripping up the entire rest of battery park city with resiliency and any presentation we can certainly have a discussion amongst us to figure out the best way to do the largest amount okay. of public okay. engagement which is the most important part justine i'm not coming back to you no offense i'm, I'm just gonna um just uh say um you know appreciate the 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 interest and and the concerns i just want to make sure that everyone is aware that the ship has sailed on the design of the park this is according to gwen dawson 100 percent completed um and just to know that th this community board unfortunately have very little say about the design of the park in fact over the last four years but rather just attempting to keep up with what was going on particularly with the the, the sort of street transportation um, entry into the pavilion, et cetera, and understanding just, you know, this idea of, of what will make this place more resilient. In any case, it is almost, it is 100% done according to her. So there really isn't any um, room for further discussion. She said, except for very small items. And um, I just wanted to make sure people were aware of that. Anyway, thanks for the time. Uh Lucian has his hand up and then the only other thing is uh, the slides that are about the buses and uh, the MTA and the downtown Alliance buses, as well as transportation alternatives and maps for the bike routes need to be widely shared and distributed through everything. So if we can pick those out, um, it's really important to get people to know that way in advance. Absolutely. Lucian. Hi, everyone. Um, Nicholas Bordone for the Battery Park City Authority uh, is in the attendee section. He heard the question about Gigino's um, and sent me a little bit of info, which I can read out. Um, but he said that uh, any new restaurant would be subject to an open competitive bid. Gigino's management would be free to bid on that um, as anyone else would be. So that's um, that's the uh, BPCA line. Uh, so they so can come back. It'll close. Um, Okay. Yes, it'll it'll close and then there'll be an RFP process when the building's done in two years or somewhere within the next two years. And yeah, thanks, Nick. And I just want to thank the the authority and um, you know the parks department, all the people that showed up. It was an immense meeting um, and you know really very informative and um, on very challenging issues. So thank you. <laughs> okay, pa Paul, you are next. You have a oh, can I go three please. Oh, I didn't even see your hand up. I apologize. Uh, Betty, you're back. Hi, Betty. Yes, hi, and I'm quick. So if I could just get this got slide it. back to remind me. Sure, you got it. Go for it. Thanks. I'm waiting for the slide. Yeah, it's okay. It takes her a minute. Yeah, it takes, it takes a bit. Okay, because basically I have nothing to say. <laughs> I wanted to point out that the street co-naming has already been addressed by Tammy. The Omni Fair has been postponed until April. 
the civilian forced illegal placard parking is going to be brought as, to, as a resolution and we discussed in April. So thank you. Now, Paul. Thanks, Betty. Thanks, Betty. Okay, am I up? It's coming. I just got to find, jump back to your uh, report. Here we go. Oh, there you go, Paul. You're up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's start with our resolution. So when the mayor, Eric Adams, ran for office, he promised to boost the park's budget and that moving forward, his budgets would include 1% set aside for parks since so many New Yorkers rely on them and they have fallen into disrepair. Instead, he has put forward a budget that would cut the parks department by $60 million. The parks here in CB1 and throughout the city have lost staff, making upkeep very difficult. Maintenance and operations have taken the biggest hit, but there have also been cuts to recreation programs, park safety, nature and resiliency programs. There's been a two year hiring freeze. Luckily, federal funds did enable the said city to plug some of those gaps, but those federal funds will disappear in June. So we're really in a hole at that point. And they expect 4,000 park workers to be lost then. We also heard from Adam Ganser, who runs a group located here in Lower Manhattan, but it's a citywide group called New Yorkers for Park Parks, which is leading a citywide effort to increase the parks budget and to, again, get the 1% uh, parks budget. So that's the gist of the resolution before you, urging the city to boost the parks department budget and also going on record in support of the 1%. I guess if there are any comments, we could take them. Otherwise, we can call the question. Hey, Paul, I have my hand up. Oh, I didn't see. Go ahead. I, I really don't want to make a thing of this, but I'm just not comfortable voting on a resolution that sounds as political as this does. I'm in favor of what you're saying, but just a red flag is going up for me on any references to campaign promises. That's all. Is there a wording that you are suggesting, Colin, or are you just saying you don't like? I just don't like politicizing it. That's all. I'm supportive of this. Just uh, if there's any way we could strike the campaign language, that would just make me feel more comfortable. That's all. It's stupid. I know. It's just something that occurred to me. How about his promise prior to his election? <laughs> just his previous promise. Yes. Prior, prior, prior to taking office. Well, I just don't want to. I just don't want to politicize the board. That's all. Uh, uh, you know what? I, I, I let's let's ask the parliamentarian or the office on it. We don't do politics, which is very true. But if it is a promise made in the public realm, whether or not it's on a campaign trail he made in anticipation of becoming mayor. I mean, we can put it Sammy, that I way. Think, I think you can you can say that it was a um he show, previously showed support for uh you can take it out of the context of the election. I can even say like it made strike that results. first clause Adams previously committed to X. Great. That's yep. that's clean and simple if that works for Mr. M yeah, Mr. It's fine. Does that does that well, work? I, uh, I don't with... really sense that this is a big issue that we throw the word campaign in there. I mean, how sensitive do we have to be? But if that's the consensus, I'll go along. Okay. Okay. So with that modification using Jeff's change, uh. Anyone? I see no other. I see no other hands. So I'm going to say, call the question. Do I get her a second? Second. Second. Amy, take it away. Do we have anyone that is opposed? Any abstentions? Does anybody need to recuse themselves? 
Cool. Everybody says Fan. yes. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, let me just give a few quick reports. Um, we too had a discussion regarding the Coast Guard building, and thanks to Alice's slides, everyone now knows who didn't exactly where that Coast Guard building is located at the very southern tip of our district. Um, and we did get a report from uh, several commanders of that Coast Guard Center. Uh, Michael Foner was the lead. And we put this on the agenda because there had been interest in the past of finding out a little more about what's going on with that site. And are they using it? Is that possibly available for any other types of use? So we did bring them in to just find out what's going on in that building. And they basically reported that they, they do own and use the building. And they have 50 to 100 personnel working out of that site. And that, in fact, the building is currently being renovated, mainly the exterior with windows, plants, trees, which were damaged by Hurricane Sandy. Uh, they are looking to do some interior work as well. They did say that the dock is closed and condemned, and there are no current plans to open it, but they sort of expressed some interest in that. And finally, they reported that the building is closed to non-Coast Guard personnel. So I don't know that we're going to get any use out of that building anytime soon, but to be continued on that. Let's see, Hudson River Park. We had a very brief update there. First of all, we got introductions of two New executive vice presidents. One is Robert Atterbury, executive vice president of park relations and programs, and Rob Rodriguez, executive VP of park management and operations. So again, it was kind of brief. They did update us on two issues that are ongoing. One is that they've raised uh, $3.5 million and are working on technical design for the Pier 26 science play area that some of you may recall that we did take a look at and it was perhaps best remembered by the interactive, very large wildlife sculptures uh, in that park space. They said they would keep us posted on when that park may open. And they also reported that they got a good report uh, response to the RFP they issued for the design of the estuarium. So we should hear more about that soon. Again, that project has no funding, unfortunately, or not much. And finally, uh, we, we discussed Brooklyn Bridge Banks and we got an update from Rosa Chang from Brooklyn Bridge, Manhattan. Uh, she reported that her organization now has 501c3 status and will be doing fundraising to support efforts to reopen uh, the banks and other nearby recreation areas. Rosa reported on her <laughs> um, remarkable nonstop advocacy for this project. Uh, pretty much all local and many elected officials have strongly endorsed our efforts to restore this space. Uh, Rosa indicated that those electeds are working on arranging a meeting with the new DOT commissioner on this topic. But I would again point out that DOT has unfortunately never responded to this community board to our resolution back in November 2020 when we asked them to abide by their promise to reopen this space many, many years ago. And we have to continue to work and following up on that. And finally, I will mention that also in attendance for this topic was the principal, Amy Pillar of Murray Bertram, as well as a number of her students. Uh, the school is now called the Urban Assembly Maker Academy. And they were all very enthusiastic 
about getting this space restored and reopened so it could serve as a space for students to use during and after school to relax, eat lunch, bond with friends, and engage in sports. The student speakers were great. They did a great job speaking out on behalf of the 500 students who attend Bertram. And I would just add that they would make future excellent CB1 members <laughs> if they so choose to do so. They were well-spoken and they were very interested in helping out their fellow students. And that's it for my report, and I thank you. Okay, Paul, thank you very much. Youth and Ed, I think we have Wendy, who, Wendy, I'm putting you on the line and I apologize. I'm, I know Trisha's not here. Uh, is it you who's doing the lead for Youth and Ed tonight? Um, you know, I apologize. I think there's a little bit of a disconnect between the two of us because of uh, scheduling that I had, but I think there's only one resolution. Um, so instead of making a full report, which I don't think I'm up for right now, I think we just want to vote on the resolution saying, you know, obviously we don't want to cut the funding. Um, you know, I mean, we, we, so, I mean, I think it's fairly self explanatory. Good. <laughs> We're good. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. It happens every, you know, I will say for the whole board, everyone forgets. They're so used to it being the last Tuesday of the month. It is the 4th Tuesday of the month. So anytime the 1st of a month falls on a Tuesday. It's always going to be a full board sooner than you thought. It's just the way it rolls. All right, so we'll kind of go through this. Hopefully everyone has had a chance to read this resolution. It's very simple in terms of youth and ed, um, and it calls for permanently cutting the safety agents and draining money out of some of the public schools while adding money into the charters. Um, Tammy, and, Tammy yep. um, it's not doing those things. What is not? Want to not do the, um, our resolution says don't cut the safety agents. And correct. Don't correct. Right. You you reverse those. I apologize. So it's a calling for a rejection of the budget. Does anybody have any questions on this? Because I know that people could answer it who were at the meeting. Colin. Yeah, for those of us who are actually in favor of public charter schools, I object to the inclusion of charter schools in this. And right now I'd have to vote no for it otherwise, unless people will be willing to change that okay. or take it out. Uh, all right. I see a hand up from Mitch Froman. Right, right. Uh, I'm on my phone, so it's hard for me to read some of this stuff. So if you can just explain is that you're against the addition of the money for charter schools along with, uh, uh, like, like separately from, you know, thinking it's going to be taken away from public schools. If you can just explain. That so to me. Here's, so, sure, here's what it says. The proposed budget adds 281 million for charter and 134 million for pupil transportation, but at this while permanently cutting 3600 vacant positions, many of which would be necessary if enrollment were to increase as Mayor Adams predicts. Overcrowding classrooms right as teachers begin to try and address the pandemic learning loss. And the budget calls for permanently cutting 3,500 school safety agents at the same time as we have seen a 41% increase in crime in 2022. Okay, uh, so so obviously we're again like so this resolution is against those things. So I'm Correct. for everything that you just read, but I have to echo part of what Colin just said because. You know, I remember when there were some neighborhood schools when my kids were young and we lived in a not the best area and I had to work the system like crazy before the charter schools were around to get them into another school out of the zone when zoning happened. And sometimes, you know, like I'm just for more choices, even though my children and myself all went to public schools. So I would be I, I wouldn't want, you know, any school to be denied money. Uh, like, like, as a result of, you know, like, 
I wouldn't want some some, some other families in some of the poorest neighborhoods to, to be hurt because that might be the only option that that family might have. So I might agree to uh, take so, the charter so thing you, out. So I think should, what we're talking about is uh, you know stealing from Peter to pay Paul type of thing. No one's proposing cutting the charter school budgets. It's it's proposing adding taking away from public and putting more in charter. Does that make sense? Okay, right. So it's I agree. So false. could it be worded as that's not true, Wendy. That's but that's I, I agree with that's what, what you just doing. said. Hold on, guys. I, There's no cross chatter. Wendy's repping Trisha tonight. So Wendy's answering Mitch's okay. Comment. So can, can, can I can Colin, I ask if Wendy? If you've a got question? something else, I'll come back to you. Okay. Bye. So Wendy, yes, Mitch, go. If if I agree with what you just said, but the way I'm reading it doesn't sound like the intention. So if, if there's a way for you to kind of reword it, because I agree with your intention. Uh, I'm I'm perfectly open. You know, this would be Trisha re you know reworking it with us. But I'm I'm okay with to your point softening some of the language to say you know that we support charter school that we we support choice because I think we always support publicly funded choice schools. Right. Um. But I think that the you know there really are some you know budget cutting that's taking place here. Right. So. Um, and uh, Tammy, maybe you can weigh in I'm here gonna, to help me out. I am. Yep, Lucian and I are going to take a look at the wording, and we're going to come back to that after Mitch. So okay, thank you. Mitch, we'll come back to you. Oh, um, thank you, Justine. That's okay, Justine, Susan, Cole, and hopefully by then we will have some wording that's different. We'll come to okay. Colin. Thank you so much, Tammy. Thanks, Wendy, for putting this together. Um, thanks to Tricia. I'm hoping that there's some other parents who actually have kids in school right now. So I'm speaking to something that I've read about a lot and know a little bit about, but I have to tell you that I don't like the idea of putting more money and more funding to charter schools. There is funding there. There is room for more charter schools to be built. And it is there. I do not think that taking money away from public schools will be helping those people in the poor neighborhoods. What ends up happening is the charter schools, as I understand them, um, they kind of tend to cherry pick the students that come to them. So yes, it's great for the few that get to go there, but what you're doing by taking the budget away from the other schools is leaving the schools that need help um, with more or less at their disposal. And then I have a question about the school safety agents are we talking about police officers or we're talking about the, the school safety officers that sit at the front desks? And I just don't know the answer to the question. Uh, it, it's definitely the people that are sitting at the front desk. So we need them. They're there to protect. So we, and this is calling for more of them or we don't want them. We don't want their positions cut. Correct. 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 Yeah. So I would need to understand better what you're saying with the pub, with the charter school. It sounds like they're taking 280 million away from public schools and putting it to charter schools. Is that what's happening? Or they're just saying we have $281 million and we're giving this to charter schools and we're giving zero to public schools. I, I don't know what this means. Yeah. Uh, Did yeah, you read the whole thing? Justine, you got to read the whole I'll thing. From to top top. To okay. I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. Um, for Diana for managing the slides, can you go to page one on this? Okay, so, and can you make it a little bit, you know, hide the, hide the side so it's a little bit more full screen? I think one of the concerns that um, this is trying to address, for those of you who don't know, that schools often get funded uh, per headcount, and because of the pandemic, you know, some kids were, you know, it was very hard to know who's remote, who's back in person. Um, and what was decided is that they would sc hold schools harmless as much as possible. Um, so, for example, even if you lost a couple kids in your class, you wouldn't get cut so much that you'd have to collapse classes. And this is part of what's happening in terms of, you know, getting a, a real estimate of how many kids are going to be in the school system because COVID just messed, it, messed all this up. Um, I think what this is also saying is don't be so quick to cut. Uh, we could New York could bounce back very quickly and you could end up being, you know, really short. Um, 
you know, just it's very, they're very quick to cut school budgets, but not very quick to add to school budgets is what Trish is trying to also get to. Okay, um, I'm hoping that everyone's reading this as they're going along before we have questions to ask. Uh, Susan, you're next. All I was going to say is if you had read it, you would see that it's not necessarily the mayor would like to rob Peter to pay Paul, but it's very clear what this resolution is saying, and I don't think we need to change it. That's me. Because it really is about not cutting the funding, but leaving it as is. That's correct. Exactly. Okay, so Justine, your hand should be down unless you need to speak again. Um, Jeff, uh, Bob has said nothing, so Bob Townley goes next, then Jeff Galloway, Vicki Cameron, and then we'll come back to those who have already spoken. My hand is up just to say I agree with Susan. Okay, take it down, please. Thank you. So I would, um, am, I, am I being heard? Yes, you are loud and clear. Yep, right, right. So I would um, just pass the resolution and say no cuts. It's cuts to every agency. It's going to be a mess. Um, but just so people understand, the paragraph on school um, safety agents is a little bit misleading. Um, there are not third, uh, and you could move it down to that paragraph for a second. As it reads, and, and we, we could leave it the way it is because they don't listen to us anyway. Sort of like the resiliency. You, can, you spend all this time, you talk to uh, God, if I only talk to you about summarizing and the amount of money that's going to be wasted this summer in summarizing, you would say, how could they spend all that money on summarizing and then cut the school safety agents? It's a mess. But anyway, um, there's not going to be 3,500 school safety agents reduced. 41% increase in crime is even, I, I don't even, you know, that's, that's, you could leave, uh, it's just, that is, there's not a 41% increase in crime in, in city school, in city schools, and there are not 3,500 school safety agents being taken off uh, and, and, and cutting uh, 3,500 school safety agents. You could send your kids to school. It's safe. There are not that many agents that are going to be going. There's a lot of vacancies that they didn't fill during the pandemic. And I think he's holding that at bay. He's not going to fill it until the schools start increasing in numbers. It's a cat and mouse game. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I will tell you, though, um, from my experience, because I have all three kids in the public school system, we, uh, there is a safety agent shortage in New York City at the moment, going along with the crossing guard shortage, and we are being told it is due to not enough applicants and not enough pay. So, that's so what we were told on we a school level. 30, we operate in 31 schools with 31 uh, school agencies, and I have not heard much there may be isolated incidents where there's not a school safety agent at the door um or two or three at the door but i haven't heard um any of that um at 276 at 89 or anything else i'll look into Bob, it i'll ca i'll catch you up because you're not up to date trust me no no Ta tammy let me do you a favor i'll catch you up there you go so why All are, right. are we uh, called a question uh, I got more hands. I got Jeff Galloway and then who was at the meeting, I believe, maybe. Okay. No, I wasn't at the meeting, but I, I okay. just, I have some concerns about the granularity of this on a lot of the items that people have talked about, because I don't feel uh, informed enough to have a uh, view, uh, whether it's on the safety agents, whether it's a good idea to permanently cut vacant positions or not. That, a lot of people would say that's fundamentally a good thing to do. There's a lot of waste. Um, uh, although I understand that maybe enrollment will go back up post pandemic. Pupil transportation seems like a good thing to spend money on. It gives it increases the ability of uh, parents to send their kids to schools that maybe are not um, as close to home as they otherwise would have. I'm agnostic on charters. I'm not in favor of them or against them necessarily. It's easy to say I'm not in favor of cutting the school budget by $375 million. 
and I, I could definitely support that. Um, but I have trouble signing on to some of the granularity that I just don't feel informed enough to know whether that's something I would favor or not favor. That's all. That's all. Jeff, you definitely don't have to vote for it. You can certainly abstain. And if you know, you didn't have your opportunity to either go to the meeting or review it or talk to Tricia or any of the other people who were at that meeting. That is certainly up to you. I completely hear you on that. Um, okay, so now I have three hands that were originally up that are still up. So I'm going Mitch. Colin and then Bob, if you do not want to speak and Jeff, your hand is still up. Please bring it down. This is your second and last. Run around before we go forward. Hello. Uh, you called me, uh, Tammy. I did, Mitch. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so I guess uh, I echo what Wendy and then Susan said as far as because I'm not able to read the whole thing. Like, so I, I agree with what they said. I guess it was just that first line. It just seems that that it's it's inferring pitting Peter against you know uh, Paul with with like well we're giving this to the charters, but you know so. If there was a way to reword that, fine. If not, I will. I still will vote for it because the 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 theme is not to cut at all. It just I just wish that it wasn't uh, 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 the example wasn't made. Look, we're giving something here, and so so like uh, it seems like we should take some of that away. Uh, I'm for no cuts at all. So I will be voting for that. But I I just felt that the first uh, one line might be able to be softened a little. But uh, thank you for explaining that. I think Tammy and Lucian talked about softening that language, so I agree. Okay, thank you. Colin, you're next and last. Sorry, I just I'm pretty true to this point. I know people at Uncommon Schools. I know people at Harlem Children's Zone. I know people at Success Academy. I'd like for you to tell them that they're robbing Peter to pay Paul, given all the success that they've had. But I just cannot and will not vote for this, even with softened language. You're making a political statement in this resolution for people who know very well this kind of success that those schools have had. I can even have Jeffrey Canada come speak to this board if you'd like. But the major point, the overarching point here, is a good portion of that budget for charter schools came from a four point came from a four point six percent increase from state funding, and a five percent increase from federal funding, and that's where it came channeled from. It wasn't a cut from public school funding; it was an increase in state and federal aid. So I just want to be very clear on that, and I really just can't vote for what's a political statement. Won't do it. So as you wish, it, you don't. Uh, let, we run by a majority. You don't have to vote for it. Um, and I can influence that majority if I can try, Tammy. There you go. Absolutely. Um, and if you would like to work with Trisha about bringing people in to speak to Youth and Ed, I would love that. That would be a really good thing for our board. So I would say, yes, I'm taking you up on that offer. Sorry. All right. Any other call. questions? I hear a call the question. Do I hear a second? Second. And do we feel, Mimi, that this needs to be a roll call due to the controversy? Or do you oh, feel that you can manage your That's call? Possible. I'm sorry, point of information, has the language been changed on what we're voting on? No. No, no. the language okay. has not been changed. It stands the way it is sorry. from the meeting. Okay, Mimi, your call, you take it. Um, let's see what happens. Let's see if it's wild. Uh, anybody? That is opposed. You like to say so. Money. Shocker is opposed. Anyone else? Any abstentions? K abstain. No. Carmen abstains. Col Col Coleman abstains. Kettering abstains. Whoa, whoa. Hang on. Sorry. Uno momento. All right, I got K. Canal, Corman, Kettering, is that correct? Yes, abstains. Anybody else? Galloway. Coleman as well. Galloway and Coleman. Blank abstains. Blank. Anyone else? 
All right, so I have K, Cannell, Corman, Kettering, Galloway, Coleman, and Blank so far to abstain. Any recusals? Forsberg recuses. Mullen recuses. Exactly. Thank you both for remembering that you needed to. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah. Got it. Vote That's count, it. Amy. That's all. Does this that? motion pass? Uh, yes. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. All right. That brings us to Patrick and Laura. And then Pat Moore, and then Susan, you're taking us home as usual tonight. Oh, thank you. Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, what, what's old is new again uh, from land use this month. Um, we had one item on our agenda, which uh, is a resolution before you. It is the renewal of an application um, for an arcade infill at 200 Water Street. Uh, in 2017, That's the committee fresh. was presented. Sorry. Damn, I've been sick. The committee was presented with an uh, application. Over. I'm going to power through. Um, the committee was presented with an application that we uh, resoundingly did not approve of. The application hasn't changed. Uh, this is simply a renewal of that application because apparently between the pandemic and some leasing issues, the applicant is having trouble with one of its commercial tenants in buying out their lease. Um, so the infill hasn't happened yet, but they're looking to continue the authorization from uh, the Department of City Planning and City Planning Commission to do that project. Uh, we spent a good deal of time looking uh, through the, I guess, the current plans as they exist today, which is the same as they existed in 2017, um, and ultimately determined that um, obviously we still don't support that plan. With uh, a number of newer members on the committee, though, there, there was an opportunity to ask additional questions. And with the passage of time, you know, there were other circumstances that came up, such as the pandemic and um, uh, other things. And so uh, what the committee also really asked a little bit about, too, uh, was, you know, sort of how we treat our open spaces and what can be done in the interim with this space um, while the applicant sorts out its issues with with their tenant which is Dwayne Reed no secret uh and we ultimately voted and adopt voted to adopt a resolution um that uh effectively carries forward our 2017 resolution after um our committee vote uh you'll see here in the slides um the applicant provided us with plans we we were told at the meeting that the applicant had plans to uh, put in a temporary installation, quote unquote, temporary for one year, starting in April or May of this year. Uh, but the applicant didn't have plans for that um, installation in the POPs at that point in time. Uh, but we were provided with uh, uh, renderings of that after the fact. Um, you can see that on the slide here. Folks can judge that however they wish. It's not part of the application. I need to stress that it is not part of the application for the infill. This is um, a separate issue in terms of how the applicant is going to use that space temporarily. Um, Diana and I, when we got this, uh, immediately tried to figure out with the Department of City Planning, how, what are the rules around uh, quote unquote temporary installations like this in, in a POPs or in a plaza? And we're still not clear on, on how uh, the rules of the road for that, that go, uh, but we're going to try to continue to figure that out. And so I think what we can do with that portion of it, while it was a question that was addressed in our resolution and it is a question that was addressed at our meeting, uh, we think that once we understand the process a little bit better, we can either by a uh, CB1 chair's letter or by inviting the applicant back at our April meeting um, or by asking uh, Mr. Goldstein's committee to have a look at how we use these open spaces um, or a conjunction of all of those things, we can better address those issues. So with that, the, the uh, resolution isn't terribly complicated and it harkens back to our 2017 resolution. Are there any questions? I'm looking in the, oh yes, you've got Thanks. Bruce and then Gerald. This is one of those emergency comments. Uh, uh -oh. I've been 
involved with this since uh, oh since the first the first impetus. I, I don't remember how many years ago, and I I I think it's an abuse of community board volunteers to agonize and massage every single detail of something we are we have been on record inalterably opposed to for I would say seven years and we've been steamrollered over it I, I'm not sure this plaza has gone through many iterations many and now now they're proposing a temporary exhibit I, I just think that we have to stand firm opposed to the the enclosure and and expropriation of pops and arcades Thank Thanks, you. Bruce, and, that, and that's that's exactly what our resolution does. So appreciate the comment, uh, Tammy. If Gerald, I can ask for your help, Gerald. I can't see the hand. Gerald next. Yep, Ger Gerald's next. Thanks. Mr. Forsberg, you're up. Sorry, I'm talking. I didn't unmute. There we go. Uh, thank you. Um, I. I concur with Bruce and, and of course, with the committee. Uh, I'm very happy to see that the applicant is, is engaging uh, the space with the temporary exhibits. Um, I don't want to say it's a little too late, but uh, I'm just very happy to see that something is happening there. However, um, you know, if uh, I don't know if we could go back to the slide that has the temporary exhibit coming up, but uh, without belaboring it, I just want to say that, um, you know, Enclosing a plaza is one thing. Enclosing um, open space that is under cover is quite a different thing. I would like to see this. I said this at the meeting, and I, I I'm going to reiterate this. I want to see the the um, this this interior this uh, exterior interior space um, engaged as well. And um, I, I support the resolution as it is. So, uh, with that, if I can make a motion, I do. Are, are there any other questions, Madam Chair? I do have other hands up. So, I appreciate Great. your motion to call, the, uh, but we is not seconded yet. And there are three other hands up. Uh, so, let's go with Eric and then Francis and then Alice. And remember the res what the resolution. Resolution is about the application, not about the temporary art. They will come back about the temporary art, no matter what your feelings are about it. Eric, Francis, yeah, so, Eric, and then Alex. Yep. So this was Eric, this Eric. is privately owned public space. So the yes. building, the developer got got to build higher by offering this uh, privately yep. owned public space. So if they enclose it and restrict access to the public are are they levied a higher tax assessment i mean what's no. the penalty uh, eric, no, they, I w eric i wish you were with us when the wall street when the water well, street tax amendment came through because they were granted the ability through the tax amendment to enclose the space um it passed the full board by one vote and i would tell you that if the people who are on the board at the time knew what they knew today, I don't think it would have passed. Um, mm -hmm. It was a incredible lesson learned mm -hmm. in terms of civic <laughs> engagement and loopholes. Um, so we are where we are at the moment, and I, I, none of us are happy about it. I would say. Well, from I then, and really, not necessarily res respectfully, may or may not agree with that. But um, yes, Eric, sir. I think the the point is that. The, Yes, you're right. Those bonuses were given in the 1960s and 70s when these buildings were built. The zoning tax amendment was premised on the fact that those spaces just aren't working uh, and that there's a better way to try to use them because the plazas in and of themselves under the rules that were written at the time, and I'm not defending this, I'm just explaining this is the rationale of the applicants for the Water Street tax amendment, uh, is that those plazas aren't working as they are. So let's find another way to enliven them. And the only way to do that, or the way to do that, is to incentivize the owners of those properties um, to somehow bring them to life by closing them, making them retail, making them things that are uh, quote unquote benefit more to the community. Again, not defending it, I'm just saying that that was the rationale of the whole thing. Um, and I don't necessarily want to relitigate the entire. Uh, Water Street Text Amendment because it's just we're going to keep going over that ground again and again. Um, who? Sorry, Eric, Francis did that answer your question? Yes, no, thank, thank no. you very much. I'm, Good. Francis? 
Uh, Bruce uh, and then uh, Alice, uh, I think, has taken us home. Oh, uh, Francis, I missed uh, you. I'm no, sorry, I, your hand I, I took. Up. I I took my hand down because it's it's about the the temporary art installations. I've seen that space go go through so many changes, and I I I uh, am sorry that we missed our opportunity to really um, get back the space or hold on to the space for community uh, use. Because as long as I've been living down here, when when that place first opened, there were there was a bunch of kind of like chairs and stuff down in that area for people to sit. And then it started going through changes when I guess the developer decided that they wanted to get the change to the text amendment so that they could do this, the reshuffling of space with the Dwayne, with the uh, Dwayne Reed and now it's falling apart. So now they want to look for other things to do. But since then I've seen, a, uh, they, they put the city bikes there and then they had some other weird art installation there and then the one with the picture that you just showed was uh no actually that was the first one because the city bikes were still there and then they had another structure that was there and now it's completely empty and it looks horrible and pee under there and sleep under there and anything well thank you good luck I hope we can do something with it <laughs> exactly thank you Great. Uh, Bruce, uh, Alice, and then I see Jeff's hand is up now. I just want to say for Eric's edification that uh, the issue was so complex that Michael Connolly, who was an incredible progressive member of our board for many years, this was his last hurrah as chair of the committee, and it was his last meeting with community. It was his last uh, go round. And I will admit that I voted for this in solidarity with Michael, uh, and it was a huge mistake. And ever since then, I voted against it. It was merely a matter of, uh, uh, like I said, collegiality, which is the lesson being uh, is you know stand your stand your moral ground even if it clashes with a friend. I even think, and I could be wrong that it was at one of Alice's first meetings and we got into an awful, careful conversation about this and I was wrong. But the issue is completely complex in the telling. The simple matter is it's a complete taking by private, uh, private by privateers of what was supposed to be public space and that did not work so terribly over the years. The arcades fell into disrepair not because of our uh, or city efforts. These were these were privately controlled public spaces in exchange for uh, uh, taller buildings. And now it's a simple taking. I'm sorry to go on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alice, and then Jeff Galloway, and then I will repeat whoever had asked to call the question. Or I think Collins. Can we see the resolution, Tammy? Can we see the resolution? Absolutely. So um, thanks, Bruce, for that continuous apology from now six years ago. Um, anyway, I just wanted to make sure that we act on two things. One is in our earlier resolution on 200 Water Street, one of, I think, the three that we wrote. Um, I know we alluded to um, actually uh, looking again at the text amendment and, in fact, considering uh, reconsidering its value and maybe trying to work with city planning to dial it back. So I, I do want to kind of act on that. That was something that's been mentioned that was in our resolution earlier and has come up at meetings. Um, so that's one. And two, uh, Tammy, I really appreciate hearing that we are going to have whoever is going to present this um, interim solution back to the board. I want to remind people that <clears throat> Dwayne Reed is not going anywhere. We've learned that from the owners of 200 Water Street, and this could be an installation that continues for a long time and is renewed, perhaps. It's very unclear as to 
um, what kind of oversight the city planning commission has on this. And I know that Diana and I guess Patrick, thanks very much are going to be getting that information. Lastly, I want people to understand that this installation is in fact was part of a design competition an architectural design competition, if you will, sponsored by a private company called Caesar stone, which is a kitchen and bath countertop corporation. It was also sponsored by the downtown Alliance and the design trust for public space. And that said, we knew nothing about it. And in doing a small Google search, there was plenty of, you know, information in interior design magazine, but absolutely nothing in our downtown papers. And it seems like a tremendous loss not to have had an opportunity for our local artists and designers to have been more aware of this competition. So I'm looking forward to getting the follow up on it, but I wanted to make sure that the community board knew that information. Thanks, Tammy and uh, Patrick. My pleasure. I will say that I did have follow up just so you know from the downtown alliance. Um, from and I spoke with Taina and this competition was. Driven specifically by the owner of the space by the developer and building owner. Not that, that was the driving force for the sponsorship and other things behind it. So I'll leave that where that may be. And hopefully we will hear more because they will come in April to talk to us about that particular aspect of it. Jeff Galloway. It's just uh, kind of a procedural question. So this came before the executive committee. And so this particular resolution has not been evaluated by the land use committee. No, no this, this is, is coming out of land use. use. Yeah. There's no vote on it. And so what's, what's, what's the position of the land use committee since there's no indication of. Any vote? Yeah, that, that's true. It? That's a that's a typo, Jeff. Uh, it was I don't know the number in favor, but there was one opposed. Okay, I can take I can take a look. I'm not talking about the one two years ago. I'm talking about this resolution. Right. Yeah, you're right. It says zero zero at the top. You're correct. That okay. needs to be corrected. Okay, so the land use committee was in favor of it with one opposed. Correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so with that. Jeff, I think your hand goes down. Alice, I think yours goes down. Hearing, seeing no others. I second the motion. There we go. Question called. Mimi, take Susan. away. Hey. All right, people. If it gets too crazy, I'm going to have to do a roll call. Is anybody opposed? Ketring opposes and reiterates his opposition at the committee level. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Any abstentions? Amaruso abstain. Mahoney's going to abstain. Mahoney. Anyone else? Abstain. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else? I'm also going to abstain. Flynn. I'm star abstains. Okay. Anyone else? Mullen abstains. All right. Thank you, Mullen. Anyone else? Any recusals? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you everyone and Patrick that was an unusually short committee. All right, so let's move on. You've got Pat and then Susan takes us home. It is 903. So we're going to go straight to our resolution. Everyone heard the both Diane's talk about it. Um, on the reso, you see the list of streets that are we would like the city to consider. And the end of the resolution is that because we feel that the cobblestones uh, are not uh, streets that not everyone can use, if there's no landmarking involved, we would prefer to see as them become asphalt streets. And uh, other than that, I see somebody's hand is up. I don't know who that is. Someone on the phone. Alice's Hold hand on. is up. Hold on. I got you. I got you. I got you. Uh, All righty. So first hand on. Hand up is, I think, either Joel or Mark, who is on the phone, and then Alice, and then Jeff Galloway, then Bruce, then Mitch in that order. So you scroll up on the resolution. Meanwhile, we can't see the bottom. Yep. 
Uh, caller 917-783, you're first. Hi, Mark, Mark Amaruso. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm on the phone, so I can't see the resolution. Could we add something? Uh, it's, we've had this in other resolutions before. Yeah, with the cobble for you, phone. Mark. Uh, yeah, it's busy, a lot of stuff going on. Um, uh, it's been mentioned in other resolutions before. I don't forget the exact wording, but, but words to the effect that um, – that uh, we need to consider, like, for example, Vestry Street is about 100 years old and still in pretty good shape, and whereas um, Greenwich Street is less than 10 years old and it's falling apart. So um, yeah, that 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 something words to that effect to to someone wordsmith it better for me, or look at the old resolutions and how we mentioned it. We can just add that. Yeah, I mean that's fine with me. It, I mean, it's alluded. It's alluded in the reso. Yeah. I mean, it is. Yeah, but specific it, tree, yeah, specific. Then, then the like, vestry is like a perfect example of 100-year-old craftsmanship uh, and how to do it correctly and in comparison to what the crap that was done on Greenwich. But, so uh, but, we know, can maybe Mark, a little more specific about it. Mark, we don't have to Mark, use the word crap. Can you hear me, Mark? The main thing yeah, that, that we're, ask, we're asking, so, I mean, I don't mind it, but what you're saying, but the thing is that we're asking that these streets now be asphalted over. So in a way, it doesn't even matter. We already have said the craftsmanship is bad. They're falling apart. It's been years that we've been asking them to oh, be wait, paid. wait. So since I can't read the resolution, we're changing our position to not wanting the cobblestones fixed to have it ash yes. bolted over? Right. No, because no, no, we feel no. that on, on non-landmarked street grids. Non-landmarked cobblestone streets. Right. What does that mean? The street, in the, that's not in the landmark district, you mean? No, so we have Greenwich Street, Hubert Street, Northmore Street, Harrison Street, J Street, Leonard Street, and Varick Street. If no, whichever right. of those streets is not landmarked, we would prefer that they become an asphalt street. They're all landmarked. Then so, well, they're going to have to fix the street. Wanna, let me just clarify yeah. a little bit further. Okay, hold on a second. Although these streets exist in landmark districts, it was unclear at the meeting if the landmark designation was applied to the treatment of the roadways outside of the protections that it, it puts to the, the buildings within the district. We know that the financial district has a landmark street grid, but in parts of the district or parts of our district where there is landmark historic district protection that, you know, there seemed to be kind of a prevailing thought that the streets were landmarked. However, um, it was not, it's not immediately clear if uh, those streets are indeed protected by those historic districts. Well, the original, the history of this is the original request wasn't that, it was that we wanted uh, cobblestone yeah. streets in landmark districts. The, the, the relevant fact of whether their street is landmarked or not wasn't relevant. Okay, but now we've changed, we've slightly changed our position because after having an in-depth conversation th that we realize that these streets, they're not, not everyone can use these streets. And so we would rather but have whole, streets. But the point is, is like the point I just made, if Vestry Street's made 100 years ago and it's still basically in pretty good shape, it can be done correctly. It just, they didn't do it right. So they should be restored Well, let properly. me put it this way, Mark. Mark. The warranty is over. If they restore cobblestone streets, we, the taxpayers, have to pay for those streets. Cobblestone, and if they become, you know, go into disrepair again, we would have to pay for them to be repaired a third time. So you mean all the rather, money that all the taxpayer money that the city and state waste on all sorts of crap, and and, you, and we're now bitching about this. Okay, but it's only one part of it. So, and I mean, I really don't want to argue about it. It's one part of it. You could vote it up or vote it down. Um, but the point is that now what's going to happen is once you say Ashbrook, they're going to tear it up. They don't, they're not going to care about landmarking or anything like that. But we're Mark, saying if the, if the street is part of the, if Mark, the street has been landmarked. Mark, Pat and Mark, you guys have gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It's becoming a solid argument which is depriving the other members an opportunity to opine. Mark, you've said your opinion. Pat's answered all the questions. Do you have any other questions that have not been answered? 
for what you're saying. Yeah, I still don't understand the reason why uh, we had this. We've had this decades-long position of wanting cobblestones and wanting the cobblestones repaired. That all of a sudden it's a complete reversal. That is a major, major change, and I still understand why we're doing that. I think Pat answered the question, and um, if you read through, you know the resolution. You can certainly vote it down, and that is a consideration that everybody on the board needs to think of. As Colin pointed out, you can advocate for what you think is right, but we do need to get to everybody else also. So, so I'll advocate come back to, to you. The cobblestones are part of our history. They should be there. You should vote this down. Okay. If you want a second chance or a second round, leave your hand up, Mark, and I'll come back to you. Okay. Jeff, Alice, Bruce, and I apologize if I got you guys out of order. I'll try to be brief. I basically agree with Mark that this is a 180 degree change in position uh, by the community board on something um, that once upon a time was very important to us. I, I understand the safety issues. Um, uh, I would favor um, simply repairing the cobblestones up to standard, uh, but I, I'm just not prepared to eliminate cobblestone streets uh, from our district. Uh, and the, the caveat that not cobblestone, uh, not landmark protected, I think is a, uh, not a very meaningful uh, caveat. Uh, certainly the implication uh, of this resolution is that the community board no longer favors uh, cobblestone streets and would prefer them to be asphalted over and that's not something that I would support. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Alice? So oh, I'd like to hear from Laura first on it, um, because I know she has real expertise on, you know, just this question, can it be done in a way? And I appreciate, you know, both sides of this argument. Um, but Laura, do you mind opining? I see your hand is up, so I figured you were anyway. Oh, thank you. I would I would love to opine because um well, I sent around to to a few people this photo essay I did and this research I did a few years ago. Um, there are ways to keep the cobblestone aesthetic and still have it be ADA compliant, you know, which is you can use stones that are flatter on top and that are set closely together, which is the right way to do it anyway, so that it's not a tripping hazard and it's not dangerous. So I think that the resolution should really be about that DOT should properly supervise their contractors and should not accept shoddy work and that also the design of the streets at a crosswalk in a historic district should still you know use a solution using stone that is crafted and set so that it's ADA compliant and I can just tell you that as landscape architects on a daily basis we come up against this issue and we can design in a way that resolves it so I I you know I We'll just say to everybody, you know, as the landscape architect on the board, please come to me. I'm sorry I didn't make it to the meeting um, to talk about this, but I'm happy to do whatever I can to come up with a resolution that keeps the historic character and is ADA compliant. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, and thank you. Alice, was that you just now? Yeah, that, yeah, thanks, just, Alice, uh, for asking me to speak. Yeah, no, well, that helps me a lot. And maybe others, I assume, certainly. I just wanted to say that Absolutely. if this resolution stays the way it is, I would just like to say that, and I don't know where I'm going to stand on it, but I still think that the last line here with the replacement with asphalt, I mean, I think there are other materials that should be considered. So I might just leave it as sort of resilient, sustainable, durable pavement materials so that we open up in case there are inventions here that, you know, I'm not a street maven, but I would think there might be something there. So I would just get rid of the asphalt and replace it with resilient, sustainable, durable, and smooth. That said, we might want to reconsider this resolution altogether, given some of the things that have been said. But anyway, if it stays, that would be my friendly amendment if it's accepted by Pat and the committee. I think that's unacceptable. Who, who did say it? Sorry. I that was Susan it. piping in, Pat. It was back to you. What did Susan say? Susan said she found it unacceptable. If you want, we can keep going before you have that decision. You mean 
changing the words from asphalt to resilient, sustainable, durable. I think Laura made the point. Oh, and I see. That's saying. it. Yeah, oh, okay. I, yeah, I think she did also, Ms. Joel. All right, hold on, guys. Guys, everybody will get a chance. So let's just keep going down. Atlas is gone. Jeff is gone. We've got Bruce. We've got Mitch. We've got Gerald. We've got Richard. We've got, oh, Jesus. Bob, Dean, <laughs> Susan, okay. Jack. All right, so all right, we're gonna. Do it to be controversial. All right, hold, I was next. All right, hold on a second, since this is controversial, and I and I'm sorry for doing this, but I'm gonna start timing people three minutes. Bruce, you're up. Uh, Rumpelstiltskin here wants to go back a minute. First of all, I read Laura's uh, essay long ago, and I really appreciate it. It was very informative. Uh, again, historically, Rocco D'Amata, who owned the Bazzini Nut Company. Uh, was the first to espouse uh, cobbling Harrison Street uh, in, in a gesture to landmarking and John Petrarca, the then chair, wonderful architect, affirmed it and we all love the idea. And I will say that uh, I, I'm a firm believer in saving bluestone sidewalks and granite slab sidewalks. We just did it in landmarks, you saw the resolution, but the cobblestones are not possible. This resolution does say landmark districts should be repaired. It, it, it's not covered under landmarks except uh, Dutch, you know, the old Dutch landmark. We've always sort of included it as part of fabric uh, and, and de facto made it such. It doesn't work. Department of Transportation has said they do not, based on repairs and, and doing Greenwich Street twice, they do not have the skill or ability to lay cobblestone that will last like a century ago. They do not. So it's blue sky to suggest that they should do sustainable, beautiful. They didn't even put a concrete, uh, a concrete underlay on the cobblestone. It's on sand. That's why there is no street there. They don't know how to do it. Understand that. They have said as much. It's extremely dangerous. My position has changed. We should not do cutesy poo cobblestones in a way that no one can maintain or, or can redo at great expense. You'd have to import masons from Italy to do Italy. this correctly. Exactly. Okay. So not you. Hold on. You can get your time back. Bruce, thank you. Moving on. Next. Well, I think it was Gerald. Okay, I'm just going to say absolutely not, Bruce. I disagree with you. I do agree with, uh, you know, we, we just had a landmarks situation where we're flipping, you know, 100 year old granite pavement. We're saving pavement. We're not saving cobblestones. My, my point is, um, there are people who can do this. Cobblestones are sustainable. They are better for maintenance because when you have to tear something up, uh, for example, a manhole, you only have to tear up a small area around it rather than the entire street. We are undergoing uh, Greenwich Street um, at, at the south of Greenwich Street right now with asphalt. They're tearing up the entire street. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, there should be if I don't know how we do. I know people do emergency orders. There should be an emergency resolution at this point for these streets in uh the, these cobble streets to to um take them up and and put them down properly i mean i agree with laura their their um dot needs to oversee it and there are plenty of people around here who who are perfectly capable of of laying these these streets properly it's it's nothing more than perme permeable pavement uh they they need to have tighter joints in addition to that um you know Putting down something like asphalt that is a oil byproduct, it goes directly into the um, it, it, directly into the the water system. It's unhealthy for 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 water. Um, that that's all I'm going to say on it. I I, I cannot support Thank the you. resolution as it is. Thank you. Thank you, Gerald. Okay, cancel, restart. Uh, Richard Corman. I'm going to keep it very simple. I am completely with the people who have studied this and who understand it and the people who want to preserve the historic nature of this district, which this community board has been behind for a very, very long time. And I think it's a it's a surprisingly radical shift to expect us to make that kind of change 
with just one resolution without a much more serious degree of study uh, and an opportunity to, to, to do that study. And then I'd like to point out one other thing about this resolution, aside from the overall thing that I object to, because I will vote, vote against it, is that this resolution states that we should base the decision on which streets to, uh, to asphalt over on things that we don't know, like which streets are, are we don't even know what, what this resolution is calling for in terms of which streets are to be done. It I mean, if we're gonna stop. vote, I'm sorry, wait, if we're gonna vote on something, it should be in here as to which specific streets should be, are, are not covered and which streets we're advocating to be uh, asphalted over. Not that I want to asphalt over any, but for that matter, we're just voting on something that we don't even know exactly what we're voting on, and I don't and I don't agree with this resolution. Thank you, Richard. Bob Townley, you're next. People say they're going to be brief. I am going to be brief. Vote no on this resolution. It won't be Bob Townley, who's been on this community board, but Joe here, not here tonight, who's been on this community board as long as anyone. It would be an abomination to say the community board wants to put asphalt over the cobblestones of Tribeca. Crazy. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Justine Kucha. Thanks so much. And um, Mariama and Pat, I'm so sorry that I did not attend the meeting and say this there, but um, yeah, I agree with everybody who says vote no. I apologize for all the reasons said before. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. Who's next? Uh, Bob Townley's gone. Richard's gone. Susan Cole, Mitch Froman. I uh, I only have one thing. Uh, it's very brief. I will vote no. I think Laura said it all succinctly and clearly, and it can be done. I think this is done in haste, and it's giving up a real piece of who we are and giving up authority to <laughs> to DOT and everything else, all the things we fight against. The end. Okay, we are getting shorter. I'm loving this. Mitch, you're next. Hi. Yes, and I think the sentiments of the meeting that we had with Pat the other day, what Laura said to me was like Plan A and Plan B. If 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 uh, if we can keep the cobblestones but make them ADA compliant, now and now Bruce might be right, and that can't be done. But if we could, that would be plan A and plan B. But uh, Pat, if you can just like uh, remember, I think I had mentioned that in the event that we couldn't do that, then we felt that safety should take precedence. But but plan A and plan B would be kind of like what Laura said, uh, uh, cobblestone, but with ADA compliance. But if not, then safety should take precedence, uh, you know, however you want to word that. Okay, Mitch, you are done. Thank you. You're welcome. Hearing no, see, oh, Detta, I am sorry. You're in the public space, so I cannot recognize you because it's only full board members that talk during the business oh, session. So I, I know that your hand is up and I know you are a public member, but I am sorry. Mimi, take us home. You're the last one. Okay. Um, I. I guess I just have some rhetorical questions. Um, like, why, why haven't, why has it been so bad for so long, if they are maintainable? Like, why, and if, if they can't fix them, then do we just leave them to be terrible, like how they are now? What? I think you need me. I, it seems like we just need to do something about this problem because they've been awful for over a decade. Mm -hmm. If if they could have done it right, why didn't they? And and if they refuse to do it the correct way, then what are we going to do about the street becoming more and more unusable? That makes sense. Exactly. Um, you know, I am willing to withdraw the rezo and to have another meeting and to have Laura Starr and every everyone else who wants to come and speak 
we can try to get DOT in there, but we, you know, we asked DOT in 2016, it's 2022 and nothing has happened and no response. But I, I would be willing to withdraw and have another meeting about this and then come back to a full board next month with a maybe not changed rezo or maybe changed rezo depending on the information that we got. Um, do you want to have a straw vote and see? Well, we can do a roll call vote which I don't mind doing, or you can table the resolution. Those are your choices. Whatever you would like to do as chair. I'd be interested I'm interested to see what, what people have to say. So can we do it? Uh, okay, so we're doing a roll call vote. So not a straw poll, because it's already done the straw poll, quote unquote, in the committee. So do I see any other hands up? Bob, is your hand still up or are you? No, I was congratulating Pat. I just okay. pressed the wrong button. Okay, good. Uh, Laura, your hand is back up. My hand, said my, hand, nothing. my hand is back up because, um, Mimi, the thing is, architects and landscape architects, we're always dealing with poor craftsmanship and contractors not doing things right. And DOT did not properly supervise their contractor who was obviously trying to save money by leaving these huge gaps between the cobblestones so we wouldn't have to use as many. And we know we need to hold DOT to doing this right. And as I said, there are other ways they can use flatter. There's ways to do this. You, and I have pictures of it in my photo essay that I, I see. hate to interrupt you, Laura, but then, I mean, we, again, I can table this. We can have the discussion if you'll come to the committee. I, will come, I don't know I will how come. you hold them accountable. It's been That's over a decade. <laughs> Well, that's really the question, and that's a systematic question. I mean, to be honest, I, we've been trying to get stuff from DOT since I've been on the board, and they seem to not come through. So I think we have to really. So meanwhile, we have someone who's died, and we've had I people agree with you. I think we have to push hurt. to have them ameliorate the situation in a way. Right, well, that's... let's do our store vote. Okay, good. And, then we'll okay. and I will come to the meeting, I promise. Okay. Good. Would you please skip down to where it's be it resolved? Uh, yes, we'll do that. Bob Schneck is uh, Sarah Cassell and uh, Gerald, I'm not coming back to you. You've already spoken twice. So Bob Schneck. I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to take the position uh, that Pat had ended up with. I don't think we have enough information to really decide this. And we, there's so much here that we need to think about, like how just to handle the crosswalk parts of, parts of this and how does it affect the people, residents and businesses that actually live on those streets. So I think there, there are more issues here and, and that this uh, just needs further investigation and more information before we can rightly think about it or vote on it. All right. Thank you, Bob. That is awesome. Um, Bob, I think, is is sort of in a long way making a motion to table this anyway. resolution. Did and Sarah speak? I second that. I yes, second that. I second that. I, second. I, second. I, I, second. Third I, I third that. <laughs> you know what? We'll table it. But everyone like who's talking needs to come to the meeting then and offer constructive. Yep. Suggestions on how we can get this to, the, to happen. It's been over 10 years. Yes. And someone can get, has died. Can we get Laura's um, presentation sent to everybody? Sure. Or Laura can come and present okay. it. That so, would be great. Pat, 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 the motion has been made. The motion was seconded. It's been accepted. We're tabling it. Yeah. I think uh, I need my parliamentarians. Do I need to take a vote on table? Yeah, they can do by voice vote. <laughs> Great. So I'm going to do a voice vote. I'm going to assume that everyone is a yes on the table. And then I'm going to call for no's, abstentions, and recusals. So this is the way we're going to roll based on where we've come so far. So, Tommy, can you clarify, excuse me, that it, in tabling it, it comes back in exactly the same form as it is today? At no, the it goes off. back to, no, it goes back to committee right. and committee will. We'll discuss it again, or we wouldn't table it, <laughs> or it won't be tabled. On it. So, versus rejecting it and starting over, they're two different 
things going on. And we're about the same it. thing. It's about the same thing. Okay, I, I was it wondering. just doesn't go through. It does not go through as a rejection, and therefore does not get sent to the Department of Transportation. All of that it gives the right. community board an opportunity to have it go back to committee, back yeah. through it again. Whether, however, it comes back, it comes back. Okay. 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 So. Assuming based on what we've heard thus far, everybody's going to be a yay for a table. Do I hear any no's? And again, if you are voting no to table, it means you want to vote on it now and you need to say your last name and your no vote. So asking for no's. Hearing none, asking for abstentions on the ta motion to table. Chairman abstains. Zelter abstains. Curtis abstains. Hearing no further abstentions, with three abstentions, are there any recusals? Okay, motion to table passes. Pat, thank you very much. And I am promising, I want to see every single person who has a concern Welcome. with this resolution right. to go to the quality of life committee. We meeting. are the third Wednesday of the month. I don't have the exact date, but it's the third Wednesday of the month. Laura, the star. We'll, have, we'll okay. share, Laura, so you'll do we'll a share presentation. Laura's presentation. We will try to get someone from DOT in there. And uh, everyone else who's spoken, you know, please come. Daryl, everyone. So anyway, the rest of the meeting, the um, the program. Just make one one more had... suggestion. Let uh, sorry. Let's just try also try to make get uh, Council Member Marte's office at that meeting. That's a good yeah, his idea. Representative, I think, was at our meeting. Was uh, there. Yeah. So, so keep going, Pat. Thank you. Yeah. Quickly, the policy that I wanted to discuss with um, with transit about this new policy that Mayor Adams has for the subway system. They haven't finalized all of their regs and regulations, so someone is supposed to come next month and talk to us. So basically, we had just a very quick um, officer Nelson from the 1st precinct who comes to almost every meeting or every other meeting so that people can ask questions about what's going on in the district in terms of police and crime. He gave what information he had. Um, hopefully someone for transit will come in April to our meeting. And then we had the new community affairs person from sanitation come and it basically was a meet and greet and we talked. I mean, I had some questions about why we don't have a big e recycling program, why it no longer exists. It only exists in Staten Island. It doesn't exist in four other boroughs. It's about budget cuts. And so we're going to continue to try to talk about that and possibly write a resolution about getting it reinstated. That's it. I'll see everybody next month, third Wednesday of the month. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Susan, take us home. All right, uh, let's put it up. There is nothing, thank God, controversial. We could take everything in one fell swoop if you have read them. All of them are very clear. Um, uh, uh, next, next month will be terrible, but this month is okay. So uh, we have we can take the two for we're doing it, I guess, by area. We could take the two for the uh, seaport, which is about the boats docking, and we've gone through this before. They don't play music. It's all fine. Um, uh, so if you, we can keep going, Tammy. So we can take I, uh, look. Uh, yep. Uh, let's put all of them up. There you go. There's Tribeca. Okay. Uh, we Next changed zone. hours. We did a a, a, a bunch of things, um, and uh, there there are no questions here either. So go to the next group. And we had a, a, a to to answer a, a Jeff's question. Everybody was basically in favor of all of them. Keep going. We. Uh, Next Pass. Slide, please. All, all I have here is Seaport and Tribeca. That's all there is, Diana. Thank God. Uh, okay. okay. That's it. Unfortunately, <laughs> Susan, you got one hand. Mr. Forrest. Oh, Gerald, what do you want? <laughs> Susan, I have one question for you, and I apologize. I have not been able <laughs> to make it to your meeting, all these meetings, but uh, 
77 one have they come back before you uh, the yeah. new applicants yet, no oh, uh, no, actually, no no they didn't come they haven't come right. yet okay yeah. only because i noticed uh there is a I, I've noticed that there was a a, a, a a paper on the on the front door, and they're opening. And I'm just wondering what's going on. So, oh, they, uh, 77. Go. Is that the one? Hey, Park. I'm sorry. W which street? No, no, 77 Warren. There was no, a. No, that's it, Warren. That's uh, Gerald. That's that's Gerald. the problem. Yes. Gerald, my hands down. Not, thank you. And since I'm it's done. not include, no, no, Oy. listen, please. <laughs> Since it is not on this month's yeah. resolutions, <laughs> please email Susan Cole and Lucian Reynolds in the office her follow-up. Mm. Thank you. You're okay. welcome. So could Call we the take question you? on the motions. Thank you, Jeff. And I'm seconding okay. it, Mimi. Roll call. Take us. Take okay. it. So there's five of these. So if anybody has a problem with a specific one, you tell me. Got it? Amruso. Can you just give me a second call? Sorry. Okay, I'll call you later. Okay, no. Blank? Blank, yes. Thank you. Brown Kennedy? Brown Kennedy, yes. Thank you. Cameron? Cameron, yes. Thank you. Cassell? Cassell, yes. Thank you. Colley? Um... Get back to you later. Chang? Chang, yes. Thank you. Chapman? Chapman, yes. Thank you. Charcutian? Charcutian votes, yes. Thank you. Cole? Yes. Cole Thank votes, you. Yes. Coleman? <laughs> Cole. Yes. Thank you. Corman? Corman votes, yes. Thank you. Kucha? Kucha votes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Curtis? Curtis votes yes. Thank you. Airman? Airman votes yes. Thank you. Flores? Flores votes yes. Thank you. Flynn votes yes. Thank you. Forsberg? Forsberg votes yes. Thank you. Frank Orr? Frank Orr is a yes. Thank you. Friedman? Friedman, yes. Thank you. Froman? Froman, yes. Thank you. Galloway? Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein? Goldstein, yes. Thank you. Grant? Grant, Grant, a yes. Thank you. Gupta? Gupta, yes. Thank you. James? Mary James, Ellen? yes. Awesome, thanks. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Canal? Canal, yes, and good night. Thank mm -hmm. you. Good night. Kettering? Kettering, yes. Thank you. Coppell? Coppell, yes. Thank you. Lamory? Lamory, yes. Thank you. And thank you, Lamory. Yes, thank, thank you all. Bye, Liz. Thank Bye. you. Bye, Liz. Bye, Liz. Love you, Liz. Bye, Liz. Thank you, Liz. Keep in touch. Lewinson? I will. <laughs> yeah, Lewinson, yes. Thank you. Mahoney? Mahoney, yes. Thank you. McHugh? McHugh, yes. Thank you. Meltzer? Meltzer, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Moore? Moore, yes. Goodbye, Liz. Thank you. <laughs> Mullen? <laughs> Mullen? Mullen, yes. Sorry. Thank you. No worries. Schneck? Schneck votes yes. Thank you. Star? Star votes yes. Thank you. Song? Song votes yes. Thank you. Townley? Yes. Townley votes yes. All right. Thank you. Z? Z, yes. Thank you. You? You votes yes. Thank you. Zelter? Zelter votes yes. Thank you. And back up to Amaruso. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. And Kali. All right, I think Kali is out. Thank you, everybody.
night. So with that vote, thank you very much. It is 9.39 and uh, do Goodbye. I have a, a motion to adjourn? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, good night all. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good luck, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. See you in the boxing ring. Everyone wants to get a drink on that. Can you hear me? How is uh, yes. Joe Lerner? Uh, yes, how is Joe? Okay, so for those who don't know, Joe had a stumble tumble. Um, oh. He's yeah, he's um, he's.